Hello, and welcome to the Call of the Iceberg. Uh, we're back, I guess. We're doing this again. Uh, don't ever watch the original one, because it's garbage. It's actually, like, the worst thing in the world. I genuinely can't understand how people watched it. Wendigoon even commented on it, saying, Great job, man, but I, I think he was lying. I think he was just, like, kind of like one of those things, like, when you're a parent, and, like, your kid comes home with a really awful picture, and they're like, Yeah, that's great, that's, that's great, that's great, that's great, kid. That's, that's awesome, man. Like, uh, yeah, it's, it's all, it's terrible. You still can, uh, it will be the first video in my, um, in the playlist titled My Iceberg, so you can still watch it if you want, I don't know why you would, it's just, like, infinitely better, even if you don't like this video, it's still infinitely better than the old one, so, yeah. But, yeah, here we are, uh, with 25k subs at the moment, so that's insane to me, didn't think that I'd ever get there, but, uh, yeah. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoy. And, well, strap in because this is a long one. The Archetypes. In Blackouts 4 Special HQ mode, Savannah Mason clones Alex Mason, Frank Woods, Raul Menendez, and Victor Reznov for unknown reasons. They're referred to as the Archetypes. Savannah Mason then uses Woods to manipulate Mason into killing her sister, or trying to at least, and well, she also ends up uh, banging the clone of Woods. So, so let's like think this through here. Savannah Mason cloned the foster father to her own father and best friend of her biological grandfather and began banging him. Black Ops 4 story is a joke. Avenge Sevenfold this is an American rock band whose music appears in several different Black Ops titles. The band themselves even appear in the non-canon joke getting to Black Ops 2, while one of their members actually appears in Blackout in Black Ops 4. Yuri Cameo Yuri from Modern Warfare 3 makes a cameo appearance in Modern Warfare Remastered in the level One Shot One Kill, and in the Modern Warfare 2 campaign remastered level No Russian. These easter eggs are references to the level Blood Brothers from Modern Warfare 3, where it's revealed that he was there during both the events. Sympathy for the Devil This is a song by the Rolling Stones, and it plays during the entirety of the boat section in the level Crash Site from Black Ops 1, and is featured as an easter egg song in the multiplayer map Nuketown if you shoot up all the heads of the mannequins within a given time limit. Teddy Bears A long-running easter egg in Call of Duty. You can find these things in every single entry of the series after Call of Duty 4, and can be found in campaign levels or multiplayer maps hidden around. Some notable examples are the pile of them on top of the multiplayer map High Rise from Modern Warfare 2, and the giant teddy bear two golden desert eagles featured the Modern Warfare 3 map Lockdown. And then of course there's the teddy bears and zombies, which serve as like an omen of sorts, as whenever you get one in the mystery box, the box moves. They also stalk you in zombies, which I'll talk about a bit later. Reznov is alive. This is a theory that many Call of Duty fans had back in the day, that Victor Reznov actually did survive the events of Black Ops, and was actually in Black Ops 2, where he saved Mason, Woods, and Hudson. This was debunked by Treyarch, however, as they revealed their official timeline for the Black Ops series prior to Black Ops 3, and mentioned that Reznov was, in fact, killed shortly after the level of Rakuta. While confirmed untrue, it's technically true now that he's alive, as I failed to mention beforehand, but yes, Savannah Mason also cloned Victor Reznov, and he appears in Black Ops 4 in an audio log. And no, Gary Oldman does not voice him. Time Paradox In the Yuri cameo in Modern Warfare Remastered, if the player kills both Yuri and Makarov, they'll get an achievement called Time Paradox, as killing them prevents the entire plot of Modern Warfare 2 and 3 from happening. Not only that, but in Modern Warfare 2 Campaign Remastered, you can shoot and kill Shepard in the level SSDD, which will also give you an achievement, as now you've prevented Modern Warfare 2 and Modern Warfare 3 from happening. Soccer or football. In the Modern Warfare map Verdance Stadium, there's a giant soccer ball in the middle of the map. Shooting it into the goal will spawn confetti and the announcer will shout, GOAL, as if you're playing soccer and not Call of Duty. Zombie Easter Egg Quests In every single zombie map from all three studios since the Black Ops map Ascension, there's been a multi-step Easter egg that relates to the lore of the games. This is something that every single main zombie map does, and it doesn't matter what studio is making the map, they all do it. Except Der Einfog, because Der Einfog is trying so damn hard to be the worst map of all time. 
And uh, it's it's definitely succeeding. It's definitely succeeding. Dirty Harry. By using console commands in World at War and Black Ops, it's possible to get a secret weapon called the Dirty Harry, which is simply an N1911 pistol that fires explosive rounds. You can also get this weapon if you're downed in co-op campaign with a certain death card enabled. Thunder Gun in Campaign. In the Black Ops level numbers, it's, it's possible to obtain the Thunder Gun from zombies by destroying some Nova 6 canisters at the beginning of the level, and then pushing down a cassette in the same area. Then you get to the weapons room later on in the level, and go to the corner of it, and boom, a Thunder Gun will emerge in the wall, and Ed Weaver will just kind of stare at Hudson like, what did you, what is that, what did you, what did you do? Dead Cows. A really old and strange running gag between developers, Starting in the very first installment of the franchise, this running gag is simply the fact that in multiple multiplayer maps and campaign levels, you can find a lot of dead cows. This was confirmed to be a running gag by the credits of Call of Duty 1 and 2, where in the credits the phrase, no cows were harmed in the making of this game, is shown. Retro Games in Nuketown In the Black Ops 2 map Nuketown 2025, it's possible to play several retro games by the Nuketown sign, after shooting off all the heads of the mannequins in a given time limit. These retro games would then make a return in World War II and Black Ops Cold War. Gaz is Ghost This is a popular theory from back in the day. The theory was that Gaz from Call of Duty 4 is actually Ghost from Modern Warfare 2. Now what's the evidence for this? Two things. One, they're voiced by the same guy. And two, the fact that Ghost never takes off his mask is very suspicious. So people thought that it was actually Gaz trying to hide the, the scar he had from uh, getting shot in the head of the Desert Eagle close range. Yeah, guys, I, that's not going to leave a scar. That's just going to blow up his entire head. Zombies and Nuketown. Shooting the heads off of all the mannequins in Nuk 3... T Sorry, Nuk 3 Town is like one of the worst names of any multiplayer map in any video game ever. Anyways, this will turn all the mannequins of the map into zombies that will attack you. These mannequins will never stop spawning so you will eventually be overwhelmed. I'll also mention this here, in the Black Ops 4 zombie map, Alpha Omega, if you shoot off all the heads of the mannequins, the next round will be a special round as the mannequins will come to life and try to kill the player. Unlike the ones from Black Ops 3, however, these mannequins have a lot more health than the player. Surviving this round will reward the players at a free perk. Ghost is alive. Another popular theory that a Call of Duty character survived. This theory states that Ghost survived the events of Modern Warfare 2, despite being shot close range with a 44 caliber magnum and being burned alive. He is dead. Some people say he survived because he's wearing a bulletproof vest, but, but, but guys, a 44 caliber magnum round would tear through that, especially at close range. Also, he was burned alive. He's dead. Drone training. In the Advanced Warfare level Atlas, there's a completely optional drone training course after you complete the grenade training. This training has no markers indicating you can do it, and allows players to reach the top of the Assault Drone scoreboard by shooting 8 different targets using said drone. Perhaps this was scrapped content? Pawn Takes Pawn Pawn Takes Pawn is a viral marketing campaign for Black Ops Cold War. It used Black Ops 4, Call of Duty Mobile, and Modern Warfare 2019 in order to complete it. It's about the son of Bowman from Black Ops 1 kidnapping Harris from Black Ops 1 in 2020. About... Something about his father's death being preventable, or was it something about Perseus? I'm not quite sure, because I refuse to watch him again, because they're just... It's the, it's, the, it's the worst acting in the world. And yes, Harris is the guy from Black Ops 1 who falls off a cliff in the level WMD. Which, by the way, in the Wii version of the game, he has a mustache. Anyways, Pawn Takes Pawn had literally no impact on Cold War's story, or Modern Warfare 2019's story. Maybe William Bowman will show up as an operator in Modern Warfare 2 in 2022? Who knows? Who knows? Out of the map on Vendetta. In the World at War mission Vendetta, there's a famous out of the map glitch used by players to kill Heinrich Emsel with a pistol, earning them an achievement. You can, of course, do this achievement legit, but uh, g good luck. Extinction Egg Hunt. In every single DLC map in Call of Duty Ghosts, there's a secret alien egg site the player can destroy. Destroying all of them per DLC pack will give you an achievement for each DLC pack. So there's four to collect. Brick Blaster. 
a secret weapon in Call of Duty 4. This weapon can be accessed using console commands, much like the Dirty Harry. It's simply a USB 45 that shoots cinder blocks instead of bullets. Trench Bunker On the multiplayer map Trench in Modern Warfare, there's a secret bunker that can be accessed by inputting a code into a panel. You get this code by looking at certain parts of the map, but then inside the bunker, there's another code that you can input. Doing this will open another door inside the bunker containing a giant teddy bear with a minigun that'll kill anyone in the room. Also, as for, like, the contents of the bunker, it's just, I don't know, government stuff, I guess. The Wall 2000 sticker. This is a pretty simple one. In Modern Warfare 2, the Wall 2000 has a sticker in the scope cover of a disgusted face. This also might be wrong, but in the Modern Warfare 2 campaign remastered, I'm pretty sure they added that sticker to other sniper rifles as well, but I might not be right about that. Burger Town. This is a running gag in the Modern Warfare series, though it has been referenced in Infinite Warfare and even appeared in Black Ops Cold War, and is actually the setting of the Advanced Warfare exo-zombie map Infection. This is simply a Burger King parody that often appears as part of the multiplayer map or campaign level. In 2019, there was even an entire Burger King that was remodeled to temporarily look like Burger Town as a promotion for Modern Warfare. Ray Gun and Campaign. In the World at War level, Little Resistance, you can obtain the ray gun by jumping in craters in the beginning of the level in a certain order. I guess, like, all the marines in that level just kind of accept Miller as an ancient god who can summon demonic statues that give you future technology. Second Revelations cutscene. This was a popular debunk theory that there was a secret second easter egg cutscene in the Black Ops 3 zombie map Revelations. Nobody knew what this cutscene would have been like, just that it had to exist. And it was accessible by doing a certain easter egg or a certain step of the easter egg differently or something. Sadly for those people, it didn't exist. And there wasn't anything more to the ending of Zombies. Well, besides the four Aether maps in Black Ops 4, but uh, besides that. Reused Weapon Assets Several weapons in the Call of Duty franchise have made cameo appearances in games they're not normally playable in due to reusing assets, which is a common industry practice. These include the RPG-7 in Ghosts, the M249 Saw in Modern Warfare 2, though it's actually usable in the level Whiskey Hotel, and in Black Ops, where it's usable using Noclip in the level Rakuta, the P90 in Call of Duty Ghosts, the Dragonov in Ghosts, the Remington 870 MCS in Black Ops 3, the Cap 40 in Black Ops 3, the G18 in Black Ops Cold War, the Makarov in Black Ops Cold War, the KN-44 in Black Ops 4, and the Panzerfaust 60 in World War II. Dog Tag Secrets The dog tag players collect in several different Call of Duty games and Kill Confirmed will sometimes have secrets written on them. They're usually in reference to a deceased character. For example, in Modern Warfare 3, the name Simon Riley is written on them as a reference to Ghost. In Black Ops 2, the name Victor Reznov is written on them, and in Black Ops 3, it's the name of the specialist characters the player was playing as before dying. Musical Easter Eggs In Treyarch zombie maps and in Sledgehammer's Exo zombie maps, there are songs that can be played, either by activating certain objects or shooting certain items. In Treyarch maps, the songs are usually rock or metal songs, while in Exo zombies, they're pieces of classical music. Jet Gun Hover Finally, some new entries exclusive to this remaster. While the Jet Gun might be one of the worst water weapons of all time, there is actually some use to it. In transit, you can actually hover in the air with it for a brief period of time. However, it doesn't last very long, so it's not that useful. Scrapped Multiplayer Maps There's been a bunch of scrapped multiplayer maps in Call of Duty's history, though with newer installments, it's a lot harder to find them. Some of these scrapped maps include... In Call of Duty 4, we have Cell Block, which would have been a Middle Eastern prison. Dusk, which was a remake of the map Dawnville from the original Call of Duty. This map was actually completed, but was scrapped from the game because apparently it just didn't play very well. Facility, a Middle Eastern industrial facility. Rooftops, a Middle Eastern town with a focus on fighting on top of buildings. Suburbs, a Middle Eastern neighborhood. Palace, which would have been al Assad's palace from the campaign. Hill, which was directly based on the campaign level Heat, and was pretty much completed, but was scrapped because there were far too many hiding spots for snipers and campers. And Forest, a Middle Eastern creek running through a forest. In World at War, there's Atoll, a beach in Macon. Docks, a Japanese harbor. 
carrier, a map that was literally the entirety of an aircraft carrier, Wetlands, a large-scale map in Silo, Germany, Cavern, a Japanese cave system, Beachhead, a large-scale Pacific map that would have featured American and Japanese tanks. In Modern Warfare 2, there's Gulag, a map set in the courtyard of the Gulag from the level... Well, Gulag. Vertigo, a map taking place on a damaged building in the middle of a city. And Oil Rig, directly based in the level The Only Easy Day Was Yesterday. Oil Rig is actually still playable in the PC versions of Modern Warfare 2. In Black Ops 1, there's Jungle. No, not the one that actually made it into the game. This jungle was an extremely small map and basically would have been this game's shipment. Havana, a different Havana from the one in game. This was able to play a map with an extremely similar layout to Favela, but took place in Cuba. Landing, a military base in Vietnam, directly based on the level SOG. Port, a snowy shipping port. Sea Lab, an underwater map set in the Soviet base from the level Redemption. Uh, the same goes with the map Underwater. Uh, these two maps were more than likely scrapped because aerial killstreaks would be impossible to use on this map. And finally, War Museum, which was a semi-remake of the map Castle from World at War, taking place in a war museum in the United States. In Modern Warfare 3, we have Alps and Coast, which was an Italian coastline, and more than likely was reworked into the map Piazza. In Black Ops 2, there was an early version of the map Plaza called Promenade, which was basically a completely different map. And finally, in Modern Warfare 2019, there's many different cut multiplayer maps, but only a few have images of them. These are King Knight, which, which would have just been the gunfight map King, but at night. This was actually playable in the game's gunfight alpha. Exclusion, which looks like it took place in Chernobyl. Farida, which is a very strange multiplayer map because you can actually see it in the Modern Warfare reveal trailer. So out of all these maps, it was most likely the last one removed. Takedown, which looked like it took place at the top of a skyscraper, and Borderline, which looked like it took place in an Eastern European city. And finally, there was also supposed to be a daytime version of Piccadilly, and after that, we don't know of any scrap maps. Will Arnett in 50 Cent Modern Warfare 2 The actor Will Arnett, most known for Bojack Horseman, and the rapper 50 Cent make voice appearances in Modern Warfare 2. In the level SSDD, you can actually hear Will Arnett talking about various things. Look how you hold your gun. You look like you're in, like, the Civil War. We gotta secure that turret plating before we roll out. Hear the train. Some of these guys were total yahoos. They show up in tracksuits expecting to, uh, you know, shoot people in the face. I don't know what these guys were thinking. No, these guys are like kids, mostly. They're like, you know, shooting their neighbors, and then all of a sudden they want to be policemen. It's, it's ridiculous. Ha ha ha. That's why I'm a cold-blooded carnivorous warrior, bro. And 50 Cent makes an appearance in the game as the announcer for the Navy SEALs in multiplayer. You know, for the two maps they appear on. Fire. Care package ready for delivery. Care package ready for direction. Show us where you want it. Care package waiting for your mark. Repeat. Care package waiting for your mark. Cobra ready for deployment. Cobra ready for deployment. Side note, this isn't even the, like, the COD faction with the least amount of maps. This is the GIGN team from Modern Warfare 3, where you only play as them on one map, Resistance and they recorded an entire set of lines for the announcer and recorded winning and losing things for them. I don't personally care too much about having factions in Call of Duty anymore, but you gotta admit, that was pretty neat of them to do. The Ray Gun Trick. In the early days of Call of Duty Zombies, players spread playground rumors about ways to get the Ray Gun in the mystery box in World at War and Black Ops 1. The most common method was to shoot the box and spin around a certain amount of times. Sometimes you had to shoot the corners of the box in a specific order, or sometimes you had to keep knifing the box. Regardless, none of these worked. Nuketown 84 filters. In the Black Ops Cold War multiplayer map, Nuketown 84, if you shoot off all the heads of the mannequins within a certain time limit, a synthwave style filter will cover your screen for the rest of the match, and the song Storm Surge by Brian Tui will begin to play. You'll even unlock the song for the in-game music player. Zap. In the Extinction map, Nightfall and Call of Duty Ghosts, if the player shoots every sparkling transformer in a short amount of time, the word ZAP will appear on the screen, and for the next five minutes, every cryptid the player kills will turn into snowmen. Scrapped weapons. Alright, so there's a lot of these. I'm just going to rapid fire off five of them from each game, or less if there's not enough, but uh, yeah, here we go. For Modern Warfare 1, we have the AW-50, the Bison, the M72 Law, the FAMAS, and the MAC-11. For World at War, we have the Lee Enfield, the Sten, the Luger, the Grease Gun, and the PPS-42. 
In Modern Warfare 2, we have the G3, the Remington 870 MCS, the L85, the M14, and the AK-74U. In Black Ops 1, we only had the Carcano M1938, the RPD, and the MP5. In Modern Warfare 3, we had the FAMAS, the WA-2000, the MG4, the TAR-21, and the MK-12 SBR. In Black Ops 2, we had the DTSRS, the Commando, the RX-4 Storm, the TAR-21, and the XM-25. In Call of Duty Ghosts, we had the UMP-45, the M4A1, USP-45, and the Javelin. For Advanced Warfare, we had the Javelin, the Small, the M160, and the Rhino. As for Black Ops 3, we don't actually know about any of the cut weapons from that game. In Infinite Warfare, we had the ACR, the Amelie, the Riot Shield, and the FMG9. In Modern Warfare Remastered, we had the Galil, the PP2000, the Striker, and the Underbarrel Shotgun Attachment. In World War II, we only had the Type 99 and the Carcano M1938, which, uh, fun fact, the only reason the Type 99 was never added was because, well, one of these skins with a Bren pretty much made it look exactly like the Type 99. Actually, wait, now that's completely wrong because one of the variants for the Carbine makes it look like the M2 Carbine, but the M2 Carbine was added in the game. Huh. And finally, for Black Ops 4, we have the Draken, the Cuda, the MAA7, the LVA Basilic, and the HLX4. And as for Modern Warfare 2018, Cold War, and Vanguard, we don't actually know any cut weapons from those games. Yet, at least. Cold War Secret Buttons There's three different secret buttons in the Cold War campaign. The first two are in the level Red Light, Green Light. The first is an alarm bell that, if pressed, will alert the enemies ahead of you. And Woods doesn't exactly like that. Later, you can find a button on the Bubby statue by Burger Town, and pressing it will make Bubby talk. If you press it about four times, he'll eventually spit out an M79 grenade launcher. The final secret button is in the level end of the line. Pressing this button will open up the bookcase in front of you, revealing a panic room. Killing the guard inside will allow you to loot the room. Scrapped Zombies Content Since its start in 2008, Treyarch's zombie mode has seen a lot of things cut from it. Alright, just an FYI, I'm going to list off a lot of things here. And I'm not going to list off every cut content thing from... Uh, zombies because some of them i feel like deserve their own entry in the iceberg and uh if you're like confused by that you're like well why, why do these get their own entries but uh these ones don't um in all honesty uh there is no real reason except for zombie chronicles 2 which i'll talk about later um i just i'm just not really i'm not really a consistent person and regardless i'm talking about them in this video like in this section so it's still in the video so who cares Anyways, let's begin with World at War. Get ready for a large amount of disappointment to hit you, because when I was researching this, I... Ooh, my, <laughs> my, I, my gut, like, sank. I was just so upset by, the, like, the amount of content. In World at War, Keener to Toten, Moon, and Call of the Dead were scrapped, as this would have been DLC 4 and would have been too close to Modern Warfare 2's release. Hellhounds were scrapped from Baruch's, the Mortar Rounds in the campaign were going to be purchasable for 2,000 points, and there was going to be a mode called Payload, where players would have to escort a payload for a set amount of time. There were also several scrapped weapons from Doris. We know they were planned to appear because they were given Pack-a-Punch versions, though you could argue that this means that Pack-a-Punch machine was meant to appear in other maps, but regardless, the Pack-a-Punch versions of the following guns were scrapped. The Arasaka, Springfield, and the sawed-off double-barrel shotgun. The Mosa Nugget was also scrapped from zombies altogether. In Black Ops 1, there's a scrapped Paris map, which I'll talk about later. An early version of Shaker Law was made, called Temple of Doom, although this version of the map was never finished. Black Ops 1 had several cut perks, like Pronade, Boom Juice, Candelier, and, and Tough Brew. Candelier would actually eventually make its debut in Black Ops 4, though. The Wonder Wolf was originally meant to be in the map Keenitor Toten, as well as a Thunder Gun in the map 5. Hellhounds were also scrapped from 5. The AK-47, Uzi, M60, and the Enfield were all originally meant to be in Zombies. Though I guess the M60 is technically in Zombies still, because it's the default weapon in Dead Ops Arcade. Ascension was going to be a lot bigger and be Black Ops 1's launch map. 
a fourth and fifth lander were even planned. Like, well, seriously, Ascension was going to be, like, basically Origins for Black Ops 1. It was going to be enormous. Shangri-La had a scrap wonder weapon called the Blowpipe. And finally, for Black Ops 1, the baby gun for Shangri-La was going to have four elemental abilities. Treyarch must have loved this idea because, for a while, they just kind of kept doing the four elemental abilities thing. In Black Ops 2, oh it's a lot here, the M27 was going to be in zombies, but was kind of scrapped? For some reason, they forgot to scrap it from Nuketown Zombies, but they remembered to scrap it from Transit, despite audio in the games files having Misty, Marlton, etc. have dialogue with Pekka punching the M27. So that rifle is just a Nuketown Zombies exclusive weapon. The Spaz-12 and Dragonov were scrapped from Black Ops 2 Zombies. There were two Black Ops 2 game modes scrapped, one being Race, which is described as kill the necessary amount of zombies to open your door and progress to the end. First team to make it wins. You could also throw a Toffin's head into hoops for points. And meat, which is described, grab the meat and throw it. Zombies will only attack you if your side has the meat. Don't die, and you might just win. Transit was going to have more locations you could play survival and grief mode in, these being power station and diner. There were also going to be more locations in transit, like Lava Lake, Motel, and Power Factory. There was even an entirely different version of transit that would have taken place during the day and before the rockets from moon blew up the earth. You could also pack a punch the jet gun, and there would have been ambush zones in the game, where if you're on the bus and pass one of these ambush zones, there was a 25% chance zombies and hellhounds would start spawning in. Mob of the Dead also had a scrapped for Toffin's severed head wonder weapon. No idea why. Die Rives is going to take place in Russia instead of China. If you chose Maxis's side during the Easter egg, when he becomes the announcer, he'll actually say Max Zebo, it's to kill, etc. No idea why they scrapped those. Seriously, have you ever noticed that? Whenever, like, you do that, you just, like, never says anything. Black Ops 2 was also going to have a fifth DLC. It included remakes of the original World of War zombie maps, but would have had new additions, like new areas and perks. This was scrapped because of an impact called Duty Ghosts. And finally, there was a scrapped lantern buildable in transit to scare the denizens off. Why wasn't this in the game? This could have saved the goddamn map. In Black Ops 3, the Galva Knuckles would have returned in Der Eisendrock. You could pack a punch the Apothecary Servant via Quest and Shadows of Evil. Dr. Monty would have been the announcer for Revelations. And Shadows of Evil had a new power-up that would have given the player a bad gun. In Black Ops 4, there's the infamous Factions, which was scrapped from Black Ops 4. Despite being announced and hinted at several times, it was eventually cancelled and replaced with the contract system. Juggernaug and Speed Caller were also scrapped from Black Ops 4 Zombies, as was the Death Machine power-up. In Blood of the Dead, there was supposed to be a path connecting the docks and Toffin's lab. This made it so far as the Alpha, but was scrapped afterwards. And Black Ops 4 had Zombie Chronicles 2, which I'll talk about later. And finally, in Cold War, after doing Die Machine's Easter Egg, you would have unlocked Nocturne Toten as a survival map. Double Tap was scrapped from Cold War, as well as the game modes Gauntlet, Tutorial, and Rush, which would all make the return for Black Ops 4, including a new game mode called TCM. And finally, there was a jetpack build to one die machine that was scrapped. As of right now, we don't know anything that was scrapped for Vanguard, but uh, until they fix Vanguard zombies, I don't want to think about that. Scrapped levels. There were many scrapped levels in Call of Duty. Here are some of the more notable ones. In Call of Duty 4, there was an entire alternate marine campaign that I'll talk about later. There was a level called School that would have taken place right after Ultimatum, where the SAS and Marines would track down Zakaev. This mission was actually pretty much completed. It can be played in early builds of the game. There was going to be at least one mission in the game where you play as one of Nikolai and Kamarov's loyalists. The level we know about would have had you escorting a tank. The level aftermath was extremely different originally, as Jackson had originally survived the nuke with objective stating, get radiation equipment, locate commanding officer, and find secure overhead cover. And there was one more level called Immediate Action that took place in the American Embassy in London, and the level's layout was identical to the Iranian Embassy Siege of 1980. Huh. In World at War, there was a cut training level where you play as the army instead of the marines. This would have been the only appearance of the US Army in the entire game. Two more Battle of the Berlin missions were planned, and there were six British missions in the game that were scrapped that I'll talk about a bit more later. And finally, there was a prologue where you'd play as a Marine and have to fight an endless wave of Japanese soldiers that would eventually kill you. In Modern Warfare 2, there was a motorcycle level called Downtown LA, and a mission simply called Tulsa. There was also a level called International Space Station that would have been a cinematic level, 
Kind of like USDD from Black Ops and the coup from COD 4, this was replaced with the astronaut seat in Second Son. And the final confirmed mission was another motorcycle level called a Roadkill. This is also speculation on my part, but I'm fairly certain the Spec Ops mission suspension was based on some scrapped level. My only evidence for this is that there is no other Spec Ops mission that has like a unique area made for it. This is the only one. In Modern Warfare 3, the only cut mission we know of isn't even a normal level, but a Spec Ops level called Defend Ferris, which would have been a recreation of the Ferris wheel holdout section from the COD 4 level, one shot, one kill. As for the newer installments, we don't really know any confirmed scrap levels besides one mission from Infinite Warfare that briefly appears in the reveal trailer. I guess I should also mention here that the Black Ops 3 campaign was also planned for the PS3 and 360s version of the game, but they weren't able to complete it in time. What are you waiting for? A care package? Come on, man, let's go. There's Modern Warfare 3 double XP under every cap of Mountain Dew, plus other great prizes. Enter codes at dewxp.com. Samantha Maxis in Modern Warfare 3. In the Modern Warfare 3 mission Bag and Drag, there's graffiti of a little girl holding a hammer and a teddy bear with the name Sam next to it. This is an obvious reference to one of the main antagonists of Treyarch's zombie mode. Or was the main antagonist, but then it became like the Eldritch God, and then it was like another Eldritch God, and then it was a Greek God, and then now it's, uh... Now I don't know what it is. DS Snowmen. In the Nintendo DS ports of Call of Duty 4, World at War, and Black Ops, there are secret snowmen that can be found in the game. The COD 4 one has found the map The Russian, while the World at War one is found in the map Ryan Forest. The Black Ops one is found in the time trial map Kill House. Finding this one will actually reward the player with the crossbow for multiplayer. Space Dog. In the Black Ops 3 remaster of the Zombies map Moon, it's possible to see a dog wearing a space suit after doing an Easter egg involving collecting souls by a dog food bowl. This is apparently in reference to some joke made by a YouTuber or something. I'm not entirely sure. Alex's Ghost. In yet another character is ghost theory, the character Alex from Modern Warfare's campaign was speculated to be ghost at one point. This was debunked fairly quickly as the two literally meet each other in the intro cutscene to Season 2 of Modern Warfare. Ghost's Secret Pistol. Ghost's model in Modern Warfare has an M19 strapped to his chest. You can actually use it as a third weapon in multiplayer. If a player places Ghost and carries two primary weapons, or a secondary that's not a pistol, and climbs a ladder, you can actually pull out the M19. This is probably my favorite attention to detail in any Call of Duty game. Infinite Warfare Teaser. A cross-game promotional event occurred in the Black Ops 3 map Nuke 3 Town. Nuke Town, I'm not calling it that. Where right before the Infinite Warfare trailer dropped, the game's end screen would show a spaceship above the map, and one of the game's antagonists come out and run the player. Ebooks. Weirdly enough, there's several different Call of Duty ebooks that are all canon to their respective series. There's Rightful King, which is a prequel to Black Ops 2, focusing on Menendez. Devil's Breath, which is a Call of Duty Ghosts prequel about Rourke being brainwashed. And finally, Version, which is a prequel to Black Ops 3, though it doesn't feature any of the campaign characters. Very bold of Activision to assume that Call of Duty fans can read. Elemental Knife. This is a glitch weapon in the Black Ops 2 Zombies map Origins. This was an extremely powerful knife that was extremely difficult to get. Originally, it was actually thought to be part of the map, but it was later confirmed by developers to be a glitch. And so, with it being a glitch, it was eventually removed from the game in a patch. Favela Controversy On October 2nd, 2012, a video called Message to Infinity Ward from Muslims was released, where it showed how in the Modern Warfare 2 map Favela, the phrase, Allah is beautiful and he loves beauty, can be found in the bathroom. In Islam, it's forbidden to say anything about Islamic religion in a bathroom, so Infinity Ward removed the map from public playlists on October 6th, 2012, on all platforms, before being brought back with the message deleted. Zork. This is an easter egg found in the terminal in Black Ops. Typing Zork into the terminal allows you to play a text-based minigame based on the popular video game Zork from 1979. 
the word Zork would later be reused in the Pawn Takes Pawn viral marketing campaign. Infinite Warfare and Modern Warfare crossover. It's been hinted that Infinite Warfare takes place in the original Modern Warfare trilogy's timeline, as several references to Modern Warfare can be found in the campaign. Most notably in the game's strategy guide, where it states, The numeral designation of the SWC-141 Retribution from Call of Duty Infinite Warfare was recommended by representatives of the Russian Federation in remembrance of the task force's heroic actions in rescuing Russian President Boris Vorzhetsky. This is an obvious reference to the Modern Warfare 3 mission down the rabbit hole. So this must mean they're canon, right? Well, a former Infinity War dev who worked on Infinite Warfare confirmed that, that while the strategy guide says this, it's just an easter egg. But in the multiplayer map Al Reb Air Base in Modern Warfare 2019, which is a different continuity from the original Modern Warfare trilogy, you can find papers and calendars referencing the UNSA, which is the main playable faction in Infinite Warfare. Does this mean that Infinite Warfare is canon to the Black Ops series, Modern Warfare, and Vanguard? No, absolutely not. This, come on, this is an easter egg. Second bus route. This was an extremely popular theory in Black Ops 2 for the zombie map Transit. This theory stated there was a second bus route that would take you to a secret location or an entirely new map. But this theory was, well, debunked, and there is no second bus route. It reference. In the Modern Warfare map docks, a red balloon can be seen floating in a sewer grate. Shooting the balloon will make it explode with blood. This was an obvious reference to the movie It. Strangely enough, this easter egg was actually removed from the game shortly after. Chorus Dia YouTube channel. As part of a viral marketing campaign, Treyarch created a YouTube channel for the antagonistic faction of Black Ops 2. It only has one 8 second long video titled New World, and that's pretty much it. It's been completely abandoned. Price's Grandfather. This is a very popular theory that the Captain Price featured in the original first two Call of Duties is the grandfather of Captain Price from the original Modern Warfare trilogy. I swear, I remember some developer talking about this, but I can't find it anywhere, so it's not confirmed or debunked. Also, I'm going to call it now, World War II Price will be added as an operator in Vanguard, and this theory will finally be confirmed 100%. I, I guarantee you, come back to this video at the end of Vanguard's lifespan. I, I, I'm telling you, it's going to happen. Fog Horror References In the Call of Duty Ghost map Fog, there are tons, and I mean tons, of Easter eggs to horror films such as Evil Dead, Halloween, Scream, The Ring, Lake Placid, The Walking Dead, etc. You could even play as Michael Myers from the Halloween franchise in this map. Jet Gun and Campaign This was a very popular debunk theory. You could find the Jet Gun in the Black Ops 2 campaign, in the same style as the Ray Gun and Thunder Gun from the previous two Treyarch entries. Most people believed it was in the level Odysseus. Secret Old Woman this was an extremely popular old YouTube hoax video from 2010, where it claimed that you could summon an old woman with a gun in Modern Warfare 2 that would eventually kill you after just kind of standing around and yelling at you. GK Nova 6. This was a viral marketing website for the original Black Ops. In order to unlock secrets and teases for Black Ops, you'd have to figure out codes and type them out on the website. There were even cybers and spectral analysis required for some of these codes. After Black Ops was revealed, the site was changed to be a teaser for zombies. Sadly, the website is down permanently. Black Ops 3 Multiplayer Lore There's a theory that the multiplayer in Black Ops 3 is actually a simulation that the specialists you play as are trapped in. Actually, I take that back, it's not a theory. It's pretty much confirmed as many as the intel you get from breaking up the specialists directly alludes to this. CourtOptic2055.com This was a viral marketing website for Black Ops 3. However, unlike GK Nova 6 and Pawn Takes Pawn, this wasn't really an ARG, but, but instead it was just a simple website that hosted the Ember teaser trailer for Black Ops 3. Sex Dolls In the Modern Warfare 2 level Loose Ends, you can find two blow-up dolls in Makarov's estate. These dolls are also there in the Spec Ops mission, Estate Takedown, but aren't there in the multiplayer map, Estate. Upgradable Jack in the Boxes This is unknown if this was intentional or a glitch, but in World War II's Nazi Zombie mode, you can upgrade the Jack in the Box grenades by simply having an upgraded blunderbuss. Since learning about this, I do this literally every time I play World War II Zombies. Secret RPG In the Advanced Warfare level Throttle, you can glitch into a building and find an RPG-7. It's completely usable and is simply a leftover asset for Modern Warfare 3, as it uses the exact same model. Astronaut Name The astronaut zombie featured in the Black Ops zombie map Moon will most of the time take the name of a Treyarch employee, but sometimes will take the name of one of your Xbox, Steam, or PSN friends, 
as an attempt to trick you that they're actually them. If you were ever tricked by this, I, I don't really know what to tell you. Zombie Labs. These were promotional videos created for the final Black Ops DLC pack, Resurrection. These videos showcase Treyarch employees killing real zombies in zero gravity environments with wave guns and other weapons for research in making the map moon. The Unmarked Man. This was a viral marketing Twitter account created for Black Ops 3. They mostly talked about in-universe events like the Singapore Crisis that's constantly mentioned throughout Black Ops 3. German Dance Party. In the finest hour level, Underground Passage, you can find a German dance party where two Nazis and a couple of campaign characters can be seen partying. They can't be killed with gunfire, but they can be killed by grenades. Finding Nemo Easter Egg. This was a very popular hoax video created by KSX Silencer in 2012, who claimed that you could you could find Nemo from the film Finding Nemo in the fish tank in the Modern Warfare 3 map Getaway by doing an absurd Easter Egg. Blundergats and Exo Zombies. This was another popular hoax video, but this time created by Jim Bothy in 2015, where he claimed that you could get the Blundergat from the Black Ops 2 Zombies map, Mob of the Dead, and the Advanced Warfare Exo Zombies map, Outbreak. Zombie Chronicles 2. According to leaks and rumors, Black Ops 4 was originally going to have a fifth DLC pack called Zombie Chronicles 2, which would feature remastered versions of Transit, Die Rise, and Buried, in at least two Chaos Story maps to conclude that storyline. So there's been a lot of rumors and leaks about this supposed DLC. According to these rumors, these maps would be changed a lot. For example, Transit would have a second bus route to an extent, and have an actual cutscene play before the map, and have a boss fight. Die Rise would have a fast travel system and a new form of transportation, so you didn't have to use the elevators. And Buried would no longer have the giant, and instead the giant would be replaced with the hacker from Moon. These three remakes would also have new names, just like how when Doris was remade into Black Ops 3, it was renamed The Giant. Chronicles 2 was created after Treyarch scrapped the second Black Ops pass, which, yes, apparently Black Ops 4 was going to have another season pass. The first Black Ops pass would include four Chaos maps, two of which being Dead of the Night and Ancient Evil, while the second would include the Aether maps. According to some people, you can actually find mentions of the third Chaos DLC map in the files of the game, but I'm not sure about that. Now, recently a Treyarch employee has come out and said that Chronicles 2 was never a thing, but to be honest, I don't believe him at all. There's just far too much evidence for it. I mean, hell, nearly the entirety of Buried was remade in the Blackout, and Zombie Chronicles was such a massive success, why wouldn't Activision want to do it again? Jaxi Planet. This was another Black Ops 3 viral marketing Twitter account that posted four times, and uh, that's it. They gave up very quickly on this one. Murdering Rojas. In the Modern Warfare 2 level, the Hornet's Nest, Soap orders Task Force 141 to leave Rojas to the mercy of the favela, as they don't have time to deal with him. However, you can actually disobey Soap and kill Rojas yourself. This is completely optional, and, and you will not be penalized for doing so. Hagman. In the World War II Zombies map, The Shadow Throne, you can play a minigame called Hangman, which is, well, I mean, you know, Hangman, by shooting arrows next to the theater. Doing so can reward the player with many different items, including a ripsaw or a Tesla gun wonder weapon. Soap and Gaz in Mile High Club. Originally, the Call of Duty 4 mission in Mile High Club was going to be much earlier in the campaign, as several voice lines from Gaz can be found in the level to go unused. However, the character Romeo 1-1 in the level was actually voiced by Craig Fairbrass, who also voices Gaz. So it's obvious that this was originally going to be Gaz, but was simply replaced by Romeo 1-1. As for Soap's involvement, Gaz's voice lines directly mentioned Soap, so, I mean, so, of course he'd appear. Fun fact, uh, Romeo 1-1 and the rest of the team in that level were retconned into being part of Task Force 141, meaning that Task Force 141 technically made its first appearance in the original Modern Warfare game instead of its sequel. Cut Choices and Ghosts Originally, Call of Duty Ghosts was going to feature choices much like Black Ops 2 and Black Ops Cold War, but they were ultimately cut from the game. I can't find any information about this, I, but I swear, I swear on my life, there was an article written eons ago where an Infinity War developer confirmed that they were going to put choices in the game. Michael Carver Michael Carver is the name of the original protagonist of the American section in Call of Duty 4. His entire campaign was scrapped and included levels where he'd fly a Cobra helicopter, train with Marines, etc. It's unknown if he was replaced with Paul Jackson or not, as it's unknown if the American levels that are in the game were originally meant for Carver, but were changed for Jackson. Though, I think there's a good chance that the levels that are in the game now were made for Jackson and not Carver, 
as in the game's files, a lot of marine levels can be seen taking place during day six, which is after the level shock and awe and, you know, the new cabins and all. Kravchenko in Modern Warfare 3. Lev Kravchenko, the secondary antagonist of Black Ops and, I guess, secondary antagonist in the Cold War Zombies mode, makes a brief cameo of the Modern Warfare 3 mission, Dust to Dust. This was later confirmed as simply just being Easter Egg, and does not mean that the original Modern Warfare trilogy and Black Ops series were canon to each other, as that would be very awkward, as now there'd be like, two Captain Prices, two Soaps, two Ghosts, two Mac- Oh yeah, there was a Mac Millen in the, uh, reboot timeline. Tank War. Tank War was a cancelled game mode from World at War that would have been exclusive to large maps, and would have been basically Team Deathmatch, but you'd spawn in tanks. Or you'd spawn in normally with a couple of tanks in both factions, and then whoever destroys more tanks wins. Nobody's quite sure, as all we know about this mode was that it was going to happen because there were audio files for it in World at War. Because of it getting scrapped, the Japanese Type 97 and the American M4 Shermans never saw any action in multiplayer. Modern Warfare 3 Remastered So back when Modern Warfare 2 Campaign Remastered was first leaked, it was also leaked that Modern Warfare 3 Campaign Remastered was also being made. And so fans, like myself, eagerly awaited for it to be officially announced. And waited. And waited. And waited. Until eventually Activision came out and directly said, it doesn't exist. This is, despite every, and I mean every, reliable leaker stating that it does exist, but Activision doesn't want to release it yet. God, I hate Activision. God, I hate Activision. Modern Warfare 4 cancelled. While announcing Call of Duty Ghosts back in 2013, it was very briefly mentioned that Infinity Ward had originally discussed making Modern Warfare 4, but ultimately decided not to as that would be, and I quote, playing it safe. So they made Ghosts. And Ghosts didn't do too hot, and so they made Infinite Warfare. Now it's supposed to be the beginning of a trilogy, but then that didn't do very well, and uh, now they're back in Modern Warfare. <laughs> eh, funny how things work out. Mayday button. In the extinction map Mayday, you can perform an Easter egg of sorts? I don't know what to call it. But basically, after Archer contacts you through the computers and Godfather tells you to do whatever, you can actually go back to the computers and activate them again to talk to Archer. And he gets really mad at you. Arsenal Sandstorm In Black Ops 4, there was a variant of the map Arsenal titled Arsenal Sandstorm. This version of the map is exactly what the name implies. It's the same map, but set in a sandstorm. It was added into the game on April 17th, 2019, but on September 17th, 2019, it was removed from the game due to players despising the map, as it was much harder to see on it. Personally, as someone who doesn't like many of Black Ops 4 maps, I actually really liked Arsenal, but I admit this variation was a bit much. But instead of removing it from public lobbies, they removed it from the entire game. So you can't play it in private matches now, or local play. So now it's just lost media. Awesome. Gotta love how Call of Duty is this thing nowadays where they'll give out limited time maps or permanent free maps, but then never add them to private matches. So when the game servers eventually get shut down in like the, I don't know when future, uh, you can't even play these maps uh, in local play or something. Something will be lost the time. You know, hundreds of hours of work on these maps uh, lost because they didn't want to put the maps in local play or something. What was it talking about again? Oh, right, Arsenal Sandstorm. Uh, yeah, that's gone. David Vondahar in Black Ops 2. You can actually play as the man, the myth, the legend, David Vondahar in Black Ops 2. You can do this by using an assault rifle multiplayer and playing as the ISA faction. This will give you the assault ISA player model whose head is based directly on Vondahar's. The AK-74U in Modern Warfare 3 multiplayer. This was an extremely popular rumor back in the days of Modern Warfare 3, 
You see, before Black Ops 2, it was unheard of to add new weapons to multiplayer, but this didn't stop people from speculating that they might do it. Take the AK-74U from Modern Warfare 3, for example. This incarnation of the gun appeared in several levels in the campaign and a couple of Spec Ops levels, but not in multiplayer or survival mode. But that didn't stop people from making fake leak videos about it being added to multiplayer. Now, originally, the AK-74U was going to be multiplayer, as you could find a multiplayer icon for it in the files, but according to developers, the gun couldn't be added to multiplayer because there's no more storage in the game's multiplayer RAM. Rebirth, scrapped ending. The ending to the Black Ops 1 level, Rebirth, was originally very different. After Hudson and Weaver knock out Mason, you can very, very, very briefly see a new objective pop up saying, Escape the Island. This is left over from that scrapped ending. In this scrapped ending, you'd have to escape the island somehow. You can even still see the HUD marker showing the direction you're supposed to go. Your old mountains. Verdansk 84 was not originally the Warzone map that was going to tie in with Cold War. You see, there was an entire Warzone map completed called Ural Mountains. But for whatever reason, Activision chose not to go with this map. It instead just extended Verdansk by a year and went, Look, it's Verdansk 84. Though, you can still play the Ural Mountains Warzone map, just not in Warzone. Or the entirety of the map, just sections of it. As you see, nearly every zombie outbreak map and fireteam map in multiplayer take place on this scrapped Warzone map. Though not every location from the map is playable, as many leakers have pointed out, there are still several areas that were leaked and you know discovered in the files of the game that just weren't ever released to the public. Original Cold War Originally, Black Ops Cold War was just going to be titled Call of Duty Cold War. But due to Sledgehammer and Raven Software not being able to get along or something, Treyarch was forced to step in and finish the game. And in doing so, decided to make it a Black Ops title. Most likely to get more money as it's a well-known fact Call of Duty games with the Black Ops or Modern Warfare name get more sales. I mean, why else do you think Advanced Warfare and Infinite Warfare were names so similar to Modern Warfare? It's not because they weren't being creative, they were just trying to write off the Modern Warfare name. Now we don't know much about the original Cold War campaign, except that it didn't have any of the returning Black Ops characters in it. Which, honestly, makes a lot of sense to me, as, at least in my personal opinion, the returning Black Ops characters, save for maybe Krachenko, felt very forced in the game. I mean, Mason's barely in the game, and when he does, he sounds and acts nothing like Mason. This would also explain why Sam Worthington and James C. Burns didn't come back, as they already had voice actors hired for the game, so they just decided to save some money and have them revoice some lines to sound like Woods, and to mention references to Black Ops 1, instead of hiring new voice actors. And before you go, well, Sam Worthington wouldn't have come back. Sam Worthington came back for Black Ops 4. <laughs> he he'd come back for Cold War, come on. Outside of Avatar, what, what's he doing? And think of it like this. If you replaced Mason and Woods with two generic soldiers in the campaign, would the story change at all? No, it really wouldn't. Unlock double XP with Mountain Dew and Call of Duty Modern Warfare. UFO House In the Call of Duty Finest Hour level, Come Out Fighting, you can find a Nazi UFO inside of a room. This is an obvious reference to how conspiracy theories state that the Nazis worked with aliens during World War II, or that the Nazis created UFOs somehow. Combined Forces Call of Duty Combined Forces was a cancelled Call of Duty game that was being pitched by Spark Unlimited. All that's known about the game is that it would have been a sequel to Finest Hour, but would have felt more like an expansion than a sequel. Sultan Room In the Finest Hour level, Depot Saboteurs, you can find a secret room containing a ghost playing a guitar. You can get here by destroying a couple of doors, and uh, hey, there's even a bread in this room, so the ghost is packing. I mean, I guess you kind of have to in a war zone. Rust and Advanced Warfare Right outside the Advanced Warfare DLC map, Compound, you can find a replica of the Modern Warfare 2 map, Rust. I really don't know why this was here, 
Sledgehammer had nothing to do with Modern Warfare 2. Maybe the person who designed Rust was working on this map or something. I, I, I don't know. Peter McCain reset. Throwing grenades at Peter McCain's hanging corpse in the World at War Zombies map Shino Numa will eventually knock its corpse to the floor, which if you then mess with it, like going prone inside of him, which don't do that, that's gross, it will eventually reset the game to round one. Dentist Chair Ghost. In the World at War Zombies map Verrupt, you can hear ghostly voices by the dentist chair in one of the spawn rooms. This used to scare the crap out of 10 year old me. Sabretooth Chainsaw In Black Ops and Black Ops 2, there was originally going to be an actual chainsaw weapon called the Sabretooth that would have been available in multiplayer and zombies. And in Black Ops, it can actually be modded back into the game. However, there's no model. Though there is a model of it in the files, there's just no first-person model. Though it can still kill players. Santa Claus and Call of Duty Santa Claus appears in three different Call of Duty games. The first being Call of Duty 4, and well, by extension Modern Warfare Remastered, where he serves as a replacement to the airstrike kill streak on the map Winter Crash. In fact, you can actually hear him ho ho hoing as he carpet bombs the ever living shit out of the map. And most recently in Modern Warfare 2019, you can actually see him by doing an easter egg of the map Winter Docks. But oh wait, you can't do that anymore because it's not in the custom game. I'm never gonna get over that. I'm never gonna get over that. Roman Wars. Call of Duty Roman Wars to cancel the Call of Duty game by Vicarious Visions that would have been a top-down action game team placed in ancient Rome. However, it was never seriously considered by Activision and didn't even receive a request to be moved to the prototype phase. Holland Campaign Originally in World at War, there was going to be a third campaign about British soldiers fighting in Holland and Rhineland, with three levels taking place in each location for a total of six levels. This would have introduced British weapons like the Sten, Brad, and Lee Enfield into the game, and snow maps into multiplayer. Luckily, we know a little bit about these scrapped levels. For instance, there was one level where you had to disguise yourself as a Nazi in order to sneak past a checkpoint. Another level where you had to defuse bombs on a bridge while avoiding being spotted, that it ultimately leads to the player battling in a snowy forest. And another level where you had to rescue POWs from a Nazi mansion and then have to defend against a counterattack. We also know that the British protagonist's name was Wilkins, and that there are two supporting characters in the game named Sergeant Maddock and Corporal Guttered. Finally, the... Uh, I, I, I can't speak German, I'm, I'm sorry. Was going to appear in these levels. These were the Nazi paratroopers, and would have been their only appearance in World at War. However, in the PlayStation 2 port of World at War, titled World at War Final Fronts, there are actually British levels, and yes, they're based on the scrapped British levels of World at War. Sergeant Maddox himself even appears in them, though Wilkins has been renamed Tom Sharp. The Pied Piper By doing a couple of extremely annoying easter egg steps, you can summon an army of rats just to surround the Pied Piper statue in the Modern Warfare map Cheshire Park. This is an obvious reference to the story of the Pied Piper. Weeping Angels In the Black Ops 3 map Nuketown, if players shoot off all the mannequin heads in a certain amount of time, it'll turn them into zombies, as I've previously mentioned. But if you do that, and shoot off all the mannequin arms, they'll turn into Weeping Angels from Doctor Who. Meaning that they'll try to kill you, but they can't move when you're looking at them. Fun fact, did you know in the Doctor Who universe, the Statue of Liberty is a Weeping Angel? Secret Wall in the Call of Duty Finest Hour level, Come Out Fighting, you can find a secret wall you can jump through to find a secret room. Inside this room, there's a giant chair, health packs, and a small door that almost looks like a dollhouse's door. This is an obvious reference to Alice in Wonderland, which is a very strange thing to reference in a Call of Duty game. Prison Break Monkey In the Ghosts map, Prison Break, you can find a monkey hiding in a tree with a cement saw. The monkey isn't animated at all, so he just looks like a statue. There's really not much else here to say other than Monkey. Other Survival Modes Call of Duty is known for its main survival modes being Zombies, and Modern Warfare 3, and by extension Modern Warfare 2019's Survival Mode. However, there's been several different survival modes throughout the franchise that, that have been forgotten to time. There's Hostiles from Black Ops Declassified. This was an extremely watered-down version of Survival Mode for Modern Warfare 3. There's no weapon boxes or killstreak boxes, but instead, at the beginning of every round, a care package will drop in to give the player either ammo, a weapon, or a killstreak. You have 15 seconds to get this care package, because as soon as the next round begins, it disappears, even if you're in the process of taking it. Then there's Exo Survival from Advanced Warfare. 
This is basically Modern Warfare 3's survival mode, but with exosuits. K kinda. You have four different exosuit classes to choose from at the, be at the beginning of the game. The Light Exo, the Specialist Exo, the Heavy Exo, the Demolitions Exo. These classes limit which weapons and score streaks you can buy in the game until you unlock the Weapons Free perk, which allows you to buy any gun and score streak in the game. Unlike Modern Warfare 3's survival mode, there's occasionally objective rounds that requires the player to do one of the following objectives. Defend a specific position of the map, defuse three EMP bombs, gather 20 dog tags, gather five pieces of intel, or take a satellite orb to the uplink. And hey, just like Vanguard Zombies, you can't pause the game, even when playing solo. Awesome. Side note, Sledgehammer just kind of gave up on Exo Survival. Like, where we had for DLC 1, they stopped adding DLC maps to the mode to focus on Exo Zombies, which, in all honesty, is probably the right call. Then there's Survival Mode from Call of Duty Modern Warfare Mobilized. This is only unlocked by being the game on hardened difficulty, and this version of Survival is very different from every other version, as there's no waves. But instead, just a constantly endless stream of enemies that keep respawning. There's only four survival maps, and you unlock each of them by surviving three minutes in the previous map. Then there's survival mode from Call of Duty Online. This survival mode is pretty much the exact same as Modern Warfare 3 survival mode, with two major changes. The first is that enemy hinds will show up as enemies, as well as little birds. And you can play this mode with up to six players instead of the two-player limit in Modern Warfare 3 survival mode. Then we have Combat Immersion from Black Ops 3. You can only play this mode from the safe house in Black Ops 3's campaign. The player will then have to battle 16 waves of enemies in one single environment, this weird cyber world. This mode is more like a training mode than an actual survival mode, but depending on the difficulty you select it, it can quickly become one of the hardest survival modes in Call of Duty history. Then there's Survival Mode from Call of Duty Strike Team. This survival mode is very bare bones, even more so than Hostiles. You just simply fight off waves of enemies with no weapon boxes, but you can get ammo from an ammo box, so there's that I guess. And then finally, there's Safeguard from Ghosts. In this weird version of survival, instead of having unlimited rounds, you can only survive for round 20, 40, or 100. No other option. In this mode, you have a lot less health than in any other survival mode, and enemies have a lot more health. There's also no weapon, perk, or killstreak boxes, but instead the player can receive these from care packages. Weapons also have their own leveling up feature in the mode, and enemies will occasionally drop power-ups. Also, the Magnum, for whatever reason, in this mode is called the Wild Widow. I have no idea why. Jessica Mason is Spectre. In Black Ops 3 and Black Ops 4, there's a specialist in the game known as Spectre, whose identity and sex are classified. There's a theory that Spectre is actually Jessica Mason from Black Ops 4's Specialist HQ mode, as the robotic jaw she has is very similar to Spectre's. There was also a last-second addition to Black Ops 3's customization options, that added a helmet to Spectre that looks exactly like Jessica Mason's robotic jaw. Vietnam Game Call of Duty Fog of War was a cancelled Call of Duty game developed by Sledgehammer Games. It would have been a third-person action-adventure game set during the Vietnam War, but was cancelled in favor of Advanced Warfare. Those Sledgehammer developers have said that they would go back to this project in a heartbeat if given the chance. Grenade Baby in the Modern Warfare level Clean House, you can actually kill a baby with a grenade. This will obviously fill the mission, and doing this three times in a row will, will give you a unique death message reading, Are you serious? Along with an audio message saying, What the fuck are you doing? And then the game will literally kick you to the main menu. Knocking In the Black Ops zombie map Kinder to Toten, knocking can be heard from certain parts of the map. And in Black Ops 3, the knocking is extended, and there's a new part of the Easter egg added to it. Jump Scares Several jump scares can be found in several different zombie maps in the Black Ops series. This is usually done by zooming in on certain objects with a sniper rifle. For example, there's ones in Mob of the Dead, Origins, Zetsuba no Shima, Blood of the Dead, Shadows of Evil, Classified, Togger Toten, and Alpha Omega. Black Ops 4 Multiplayer Lore Every single base Black Ops 4 multiplayer map has a story hidden in it. These usually relate back to the Specialist HQ storyline involving the clones of Mason, Woods, etc. Some of these include the clone of Menendez slaying weapons to the Russian government in the map Icebreaker, 
There were apparently people on the map contraband who went insane and after being stranded there. And there's an anti-government cult on the map militia called the Patriots of the North who began working with the Russian government after killing the Hacienda crime syndicates. Which then, if you go to the map Hacienda, which is that crime syndicate's base of operations, you can actually see that uh, there's been a huge gunfight there prior to the match beginning. Hadir is Al-Assad. There's a theory that Hadir from the Modern Warfare campaign becomes Al-Assad. At this point, it's unconfirmed, but so like technically it could be true. But let's be real here, it's probably not. Useless minigun. In the Modern Warfare 3 map Lookout, which is objectively the best face-off map, just going to throw that out there now, there's a mounted minigun the player can use. However, it's completely useless because it's aimed towards the outside of the map, meaning that it's impossible to kill any players with it unless they jump on that secret area in front of the minigun. But, I mean, how often is it going to happen in a match? Side note, this map is listed in the game files as MP Rest Repo, which is a reference to the 2010 documentary Rest Repo, which is about US soldiers stationed in a base in Afghanistan that looks very similar to one on the map. C. Miller joins the CIA. It's very briefly mentioned in the opening cutscene of the Black Ops level USDD that a CIA agent named C. Miller interviewed Mason. It's very possible that this is C. Miller, the protagonist of the American part of the campaign in World at War, who is now part of the CIA. I mean, USCD has a lot of World at War references already, so might as well just throw in one more. Shangri-La is on Mars. This is a very popular theory that the Black Ops zombie map Shangri-La actually takes place on Mars. It's a fairly lengthy theory, so I won't go too deep into it, but basically this theory only exists because when making the map, Treyarch designed the mountains of the background off of an actual mountainscape from Mars. They probably just did this to make the map seem more mythical and weird, but people took this a little too literally. Devil's Brigade. This was a canceled Call of Duty game being made by Underground Development, and would have been a third-person shooter focusing on the Italian front in World War II, a front that's, I don't think a single Call of Duty game's ever touched. While it didn't go too far in development, there was a prototype built, and a video of it was leaked on the internet. Modern Warfare Loot Boxes In Modern Warfare's beta, several players received a glitch saying that they had earned a supply drop, despite Infinity Ward saying that they weren't going to be in the game. Thankfully, they ended up not being in the game, but it's very strange that there were images of loot boxes still in the game's code during the beta. I guess loot boxes were originally intended for Modern Warfare. The Frozen Forest This is a major part of Black Ops 3's story. And many people claim repeating the Imagine Yourself in the Frozen Forest monologue that appears throughout the campaign actually calms them down and uh, works as meditation. I have no idea if this actually works. I, you know, which, whatever works for you, I guess. I don't know. LOL. In the Extinction map, Point of Contact, if the player shoots the letters LOL on the motel sign within five seconds, the phrase will appear across the screen in bright blue and purple text and then every cryptid that the player kills for the next two minutes will explode into a pile of golden alien plush toys. Ozone and Scarecrow never died. In the Modern Warfare 2 level Loose Ends, there are two soldiers that help you and Ghost defend the estate, Ozone and Scarecrow. However, both these characters die in the defense, though you can like keep one of them alive, but I mean, canonically they still die. However, in the Modern Warfare 3 Spec Ops mission Kill Switch, both player 1 and 2 play as Task Force 141 soldiers named Scarecrow and Ozone. No other playable character in Spec Ops is ever named in-game, which has led players to believe that Ozone and Scarecrow somehow survived Modern Warfare 2, or that the Spec Ops mission takes place prior to Modern Warfare 2. Or just Infinity Ward using names. Giant Cow and the United Offensive level Crossroads, the player can find a giant cow with a large bell in a mysterious basement. However, you can't go to this easter egg by playing the game normally. You have to use Noclip, or as it's done in this game, UFO, to get out of the level to find the house of the giant cow. Call of Duty Tactics This was yet another cancelled Call of Duty game by Vicarious Visions. This was a Call of Duty game set in World War II and was a strategy game instead of a first person shooter. It didn't go very far in development and was cancelled sometime in 2008-2009. Wet Work in Modern Warfare 2 The Call of Duty 4 map Wet Work can actually be seen in the Modern Warfare 2 Spec Ops mission Suspension in the distance. This was simply just Infinity Ward reusing assets, but it's a neat little easter egg.
Also, as a bonus fact, did you know that Call of Duty Online has a unique version of wet work called Freighter? And it looks way cooler than the standard wet work map. Somebody's even ported the map to Modern Warfare 2, so you can play it there. Dr. Monty in Remastered Maps Dr. Monty was added into every single remastered map in Zombie Chronicles in Black Ops 3. Though not in person, he appears via radios and gives backstories to most of the maps. He even makes references to how in the Black Ops 1 and Black Ops 3 versions of Nocturne, Toten, and Verrucht, Ultimus is there instead of the Marines. And he's just kind of like, uh, I don't think you guys were originally supposed to be here. I think there was supposed to be like someone else, but that doesn't really matter. Giant Red Apple. In the Call of Duty Finest Hour level, Operation Little Saturn, the player can find a giant red apple. And if the player goes into the apple, because of course you can, you can find a UFO. However, if the player leaves the apple, a bunch of Nazis with Pandershreks will spawn in, along with a Flak 88 gun that will fire at you, despite there not being a gunner for it. Modern Warfare 2 Remastered Ban. Modern Warfare 2 Campaign Remastered wasn't released in Russia, for uh, obvious reasons. Though I guess I shouldn't say it's banned in Russia, because it's not like officially banned. You can still play it in Russia, but you just have to import copies in there. Hidden Terminal Lore. In the Terminal in Black Ops, there's a bunch of lore that nobody ever talks about, despite how weird it being. And let's be honest here, a lot of the stuff's probably not canon anymore. For example, Weaver has a niece named Christina Reskova, who is a double agent working for the KGB and the CIA. She also became pregnant with the protege of Dragovich's child, but then she's beaten to the point of miscarrying that baby by the same guy. Yeah, I bet you didn't think the concept of miscarriage was going to be in a Call of Duty game. She then works with the CIA to seduce and try to kill Alex Mason as part of Operation Charitas. Vanguard Ducks in a majority of Vanguard's launch multiplayer maps, there's a single rubber duck that appears on them. There's not much else to this. It just seems to be Vanguard's version of the teddy bear easter egg. Contingency Sub Strangely, the submarine featured in the Modern Warfare 2 level Contingency has its entire interior modeled. This is visible if you use no clip to get inside of it. It's unknown why this is the case as it's impossible for the player to enter the submarine via normal means. I personally think this is left over from a scrap part of the level, as there's a unique keyboard in the console room that doesn't appear anywhere else in the game. So maybe you were originally supposed to board the sub at price? It also seems that Infinity Ward reused this room for the level Hunter Killer in Modern Warfare 3. Saving Private Ryan There's been many different references to the film Saving Private Ryan in Call of Duty, though there's two very notable ones for featuring Private Ryan himself. The first one is Private First Class Ryan, who appears in the level Semperfy, in World at War, where he's attacked by a Japanese soldier who's on fire. If you save him, you'll get the achievement Saved Private Ryan. Then, in the Call of Duty Ghost level, All or Nothing, you can find another Private Ryan who's about to be executed by, by a Federation soldier. If you save him, you won't get an achievement, probably because while well, you did save him here, the aircraft carrier he's on sinks by the end of the level, so he probably wasn't saved. Female Soldiers in Call of Duty 2 while Call of Duty Ghosts was the first Call of Duty game to feature playable female soldiers in multiplayer, and Finest Hour was the first Call of Duty game to feature a playable female soldier, Call of Duty 2 was the first main series Call of Duty game to feature female soldiers. They'd show up exclusively in some of the Soviet levels in the game. Strife in Cold War The Strife, aka the best pistol in Black Ops 4 Zombies, was a weapon created for Black Ops 4, but funny enough, the Strife appears in Black Ops Cold War, once on a table of the mission Operation Red Circus, and on a table the multiplayer map Crossroads. I wouldn't have included this in the reused weapon assets entry, but 
The difference here is that the Strife shouldn't exist in Cold War, as not only is it a fictional gun created for Black Ops 4, but in-universe it was created sometime in between 2025 and 2045, while Black Ops Cold War takes place in the early 80s. Mount Yamata So in Cold War's Warzone storyline, Stitch nukes Mount Yamata, the mountain from the level WMD from Black Ops, and the level Echoes of a Cold War in Black Ops Cold War. Pretty wacky stuff. But what's weird is there's a pretty big inconsistency here. You see, in the cutscene, we see Stitch viewing the nuke go off before looking over at Verdansk. Problem is, this is impossible. Mount Yamata and Verdansk, in real life, are not remotely close to each other. And before you go, Verdansk isn't real. I know that, but it's based on the city of Donsk in Ukraine, so come on. Comics. So I think most people know about the Call of Duty comic based on Ghost, simply titled Modern Warfare 2 Ghost which tells Ghost's backstory. It lasted for six issues in 2009 and has some really weird, edgy stuff in it. Like how Ghost was abused as a kid and is then brainwashed to killing people by imagining skulls painted on people's faces to remind him of his abusive father. Ghost is then buried alive with a rotting corpse, but then uses the rotting corpse's lower jawbone to dig himself out, and then his family gets murdered and he's framed for it. It's a very wild comic and reeks of mid-2000s, despite it being released in the end of the 2000s. But this wasn't the last time Call of Duty received a comic. Oh, not by a long shot. In 2015, a six-issue miniseries called Call of Duty Black Ops 3 was released and was a prequel to the game. In fact, it's actually really important to the Black Ops 3 storyline, as all the characters in the comic are characters in the game that you kill, but you think that's someone different or something. Like, the lady you see on this cover is actually Sarah Hall in the campaign, or Sarah Hall represents her in the campaign. It's... It's really weird. Like, there's this dude named Dylan Stone in the comic, and the entire Black Ops 3 storyline is Taylor and Hendrix chasing after him. But in the game, Stone's replaced with Taylor, and you're doing what Taylor did in real life. I don't understand it. I don't, I don't, I don't care. And then, in 2016, another six-issue series was released by Call of Duty called Call of Duty Zombies, which tells the story of what Victus, or the transit crew, did after the events of Buried and how they eventually ended up frozen in Blood of the Dead. Then, in 2018, we got two different Call of Duty comic series. The first one being Black Ops 4, which ran for 10 issues, though they were all very short issues, and told the backstories of every single specialist from Black Ops 4. This comic also teased future specialists in the game. For example, Outrider makes a cameo in one of the issues, and she was eventually added into the game. Also, a robot like Reaper appears in one of the covers, and, well, he was added into the game. This comic wasn't originally physically released, as it was only released originally on the Call of Duty website. The way physical version of the comic has been released, and, yeah, yes, I, I bought it for the video. But like I said, there was another comic released in 2018 called Call of Duty Zombies 2, which told the backstory of the Chaos storyline. This was by far the shortest lasting comic, however, as it only ran for four issues. Hey, just like the four Chaos maps. And finally, there's Call of Duty Vanguard, which gives further backstory to how Task Force Vanguard was created, and actually gives you a backstory for the uh, playable character in the first level of the game. You know the one, the guy that gets brutally beaten to death with a chair. As of recording, this only has five issues, but I'm pretty sure there's going to at least be one more, but I could be wrong. And that's where we're going to end this section, and this overall tier in general. But then I remembered the insanity that is Call of Duty Mobile. You see, Call of Duty Mobile actually features a storyline to it, but the story makes no sense and is a crossover between every single Call of Duty game since God 4. Just listen to some of the things that happened in this comic, alright? So there's a criminal organization called the Five Knights, who's led by Adler from Cold War. The Five Knights also work with the Mercs from Black Ops 2, Chorus Dia, and the Yakuza for some reason. The Five Knights also contain the following members. Mace and Kruger from Modern Warfare 2019, Makarov from the original Modern Warfare timeline, Rourke from Ghosts, Menendez from Black Ops 2, and a bunch of wacky D-list Batman villains like Templar, Rot, Dame, and Modir. They battle against the United Anti-Terrorism Coalition, which is a faction started up by Captain Price of the original Modern Warfare trilogy. It includes members like General Shepard, Ghost, Soap, and Roach from the original Modern Warfare trilogy, Mara, who is dead by the way, Alex, Gollum, Otter, and Charlie from Modern Warfare 2019's continuity, Merrick, Q, 
Keegan and Ajax. Yeah, I remember that dude. No, you don't. Come on. From Call of Duty Ghosts. And Primus Tank Dempsey, who is also dead and even received a funeral. There's also the Atlas Corporation from Advanced Warfare, who's a neutral party, whose only known member is a woman named Either. But then there's the faction, the Dark Covenant, who is made up of original characters like Dark Shepherd and Witch Doctor. But then just like Firebreak from Black Ops 3 and 4 is part of them. But then Reznov shows up and he's apparently 103 years old and gets rescued from Ghost and Tank Dempsey from a prison. And then Hudson Avengers and games himself with uh, Cyanide. So that's... Wow, okay. Oh yeah, the clown exosuit guy from Vance Warfare even shows up at one point because, you know, why not? Gollum also has a gun that shoots bees, which is just something that I guess exists in this universe. The Five Knights use Alcatraz as a base until a big battle happens there, which results in Alcatraz blowing up. There's also just an entire battleship that has the Ghosts logo painted on it. And then finally, Ritofen, Nikolai, and Takio, all of which are the Primus versions, attend Tank's funeral, uh, but then they just kind of leave. They don't, they don't do anything else in the story. Map-based streaks. In Call of Duty Ghosts in Advanced Warfare, Call of Duty experimented with map-based killstreaks. Basically, when you throw a care package on certain maps, instead of getting a SATCOM, XS1 Goliath, Warbird, or Juggernaut Maniac, you can get a unique killstreak depending on the map you're on. These could get pretty wacky. Some notable examples from Call of Duty Ghosts include On the map Whiteout, there's the satellite crash, in which the player's team gets a permanent SATCOM, though if any player goes near the crash satellite, their radar will become jammed. On the map Ruins, there's a volcano bomb, where you can literally activate a volcano somehow and shower the map with molten rock. On the map Behemoth, there's the Heli Gunner, which is basically a tribute to the Black Ops 1 Chopper Gunner, where a Black Hawk flies around the map and you sit in it with a minigun, able to gun down people. Problem is, you can actually get shot out of the helicopter now, so that's kind of weird. On the map on Earth, you can call in three Seeker Cryptids from Extinction, who will run around the map and blow up. On the map Mutiny, you can call in a ghostly crew of ghost skeleton pirates, one having a Kimbo Pistols and the other using his hooked hand as a melee weapon. On the map Dynasty, you can call in an FYL-21 airstrike, which will cause three FYL-21s to do a bombing run before a fourth one shows up and, and hovers around the map killing players basically a tribute to the Harrier Strike from Modern Warfare 2. On the map Sovereign, you can call in a Sabotage, which will cause all the pipes around the map to explode, causing gas to fill the entire map, which makes the map extremely hard to see for about 30 seconds for both teams. So, really, everyone suffers. On the map Departed, there's the Death Marachi, where once called in, you'll become the Death Marachi and go around the map killing enemy players with your dual magnums. But whenever you kill an enemy, their body will come back to life and become a temporary squad mate to help kill other players. And finally, the map Favela, you can call in a YA gunship that is literally just a reskin tribute to the AC-130 from previous games. As for Advanced Warfare, some notable examples include On the map Defender, there's the anti-air laser system, which, which basically acts as an air superiority for your team as a giant laser gun will, de will destroy any enemy air killstreaks. On the map Terrace, you can call in a sniper drone that's similar to the drone used in the campaign, notably the one for the drone training section I talked about earlier. On the map Comeback, a series of walker tanks can be called in to fire on enemy players. This is easily the most overpowered killstreak in any Call of Duty game. On the map Atlas Gorge, you can call in two rail guns that you can switch between and fire down the map with high explosive rounds. On the map Detroit, you can call in a tram turret, in which you control a turret traveling on the tram rails around the map. On the map Solar, you can call in a Solar Reflection Tower, which allows players to control a beam of concentrated sunlight to burn enemies to death. On the map Site-244, you can get a Super Serum, which is an alien organism the player crushes that will give them advanced abilities that last one minute regardless if they die or not. And finally on the map Chop Shop, you can call in an Advanced Repulsion Turret, which is basically a tribute to the Guardian Killstreak from Black Ops 2. Mountain Dew Armor in promotion for Advanced Warfare, Activision partnered with Mountain Dew to give players exclusive Mountain Dew armor in the game, if players bought certain Mountain Dew products. Since this was the only way to get the armor, the Mountain Dew armor has become the most rare armor set in the entire game. Tommy? No, that's mine. No, 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 no. Tommy, do not drink that. 
Doritos to unlock exclusive Call of Duty Advanced Warfare in-game rewards. Mobile phone games. There's been plenty of Call of Duty games from mobile devices. There's been mobile phone versions of Call of Duty 2, COD 4, World at War, Modern Warfare 2, and even Black Ops. These are all overhead shooters that have nothing to do with their main game counterparts. No returning characters, no simpler plots, etc. Just generic army plots and characters. That is except Call of Duty 2 for Windows phones, which was a first-person shooter released in 2007 that even had its own multiplayer. Pretty impressive if you ask me. The Classic In the World War II Nazi Zombies map The Final Reich, you can get a secret weapon known as The Classic. You can get this weapon by donating jolts, or points, to four small bowls scattered around the map. Once you do this, the classic will now be available to get in the mystery box. It's a modification of the PPSH, but features 70 bullets in the magazine, which is more than the standard PPSH with extended mags. It has a much higher fire rate. It even gets a new pack-a-punch name. The normal PPSH becomes the Dedushka, while the classic becomes the Babushka. The classic is a reference to the original World at War PPSH, which, in Zombies, was well-known by zombie players as being one of the most OP weapons in the entire game. Noriega Lawsuit Evil human being, Manuel Noriega, in 2014, sued Activision over the use of his likeness in Black Ops 2, and portraying him as a villain. My man, if you didn't want to be portrayed as a villain, you probably shouldn't have done, like, 90% of the things you did in life. However, this lawsuit didn't actually go anywhere, as a California judge dismissed the case in October of that year. Dire Wolves. In the Black Ops 3 level Demon Within, there's a very strange enemy that you fight. Well, okay, there's a lot of strange enemies in that level. I'm not talking about the fake mine Nazis, or the fake mine zombies, or the fake mine Transformer Tiger Tank. I'm talking about the Dire Wolves. Sarah Hall claims that during World War II, Dire Wolves would scavenge wounded soldiers, and then the weak soldiers, and then the strong soldiers. Maybe this is meant to be a metaphor or something, but if taken literally, she's claiming that dire wolves were alive during World War II, despite them going extinct 9,500 years ago. It's just a really weird choice of enemy in the level. Brains. Brains is a secret weapon in World at War and Black Ops. It's a weapon that makes the player's hands reach out and hit enemies like a zombie, and you'll even groan and growl when attacking. You can only get this weapon using console commands, Though in Black Ops 2, you can get it just by simply playing turned. Though I don't know why you'd want to play that. It's the weakest weapon in all of zombies and wasn't meant to be usable. Instead, it was created as a test while programming the zombies. Though you can actually see brains being used in the World at War Varuk trailer to show the zombies' point of view. The Ammomatic This is a cut zombies perk in World at War. Its design was based on a candy vending machine and wouldn't actually be a drink like the other perks but instead would give the player, or maybe even all the players, a max ammo. It was probably scrapped because it would make zombies really easy if you could just buy max ammos. Music video lore. Treyarch will often release music videos made in the Black Ops engine every time they release a new zombies map. These music videos will have the musical easter egg of the most recent map playing, but that's not the only notable thing about them. In a good chunk of these music videos, we actually see events that happen in the zombie storyline that we don't normally see in gameplay. For example, in the Dead of the Night music video, we actually see Godfrey getting killed and being resurrected as a, as a cult sleeper agent. Original Modern Warfare 3 plans. As revealed by Robert Bowling, a former Infinity War developer, No last stand! <laughs> Fuck you, last stand! In an exchange on Facebook, Modern Warfare 3 wasn't originally planned to be about World War 3 or Makarov, or even be a follow-up to Modern Warfare 2. It was going to be a prequel about Ghost, which is why the Ghost comic was even greenlit, as it was meant to be a tease for the Ghost prequel game. But because of how much Modern Warfare 2 sold, Activision told Infinity Ward, yeah, you guys gotta follow up on Modern Warfare 2, we, we, we need that money. And so, the Ghost game was cancelled. Though apparently elements of the Ghost prequel game's story and gameplay were incorporated into Call of Duty Ghosts. Paris. 
Originally, Moon was not going to be the final Black Ops Zombies map. It was going to be a map set in Paris, France. This was revealed in 2011 by an ex-Zombies producer during the Zombies XP panel. All we know about this cancelled map is that it was teased briefly back in Doris, and that the pack a punch of the map would be underneath the Eiffel Tower, and when there, hordes of zombies running at you at high health and speed would spawn in. This would ultimately inspire No Man's Land on the map Moon. Rewriting War Crimes In the modern warfare level Highway of Death, you battle Russian soldiers in a location very, very similar to the actual Highway of Death which was a highway in Iraq and notable in history because the United States committed a serious war crime here and bombed retreating Iraqi forces during the Gulf War. But in Modern Warfare, it's not meant to actually be the real Highway of Death, despite the name of the level implying that. It's just a reference to it as in the Modern Warfare timeline, this Highway of Death was caused by the Russians, not the Americans, and it's in a fictional country instead of Iraq. Some people have accused Infinity Ward of unintentionally trying to rewrite history. Though I disagree that they were trying to rewrite history, I will admit it is weird they're referencing a real-world war crime, but changing the location of it and the people who did it. Second Modern Warfare 2 Massacre Originally, the massacre in No Russian was going to be the only massacre in Modern Warfare 2. In the Modern Warfare 2 level of their own accord, there is a section where you're supposed to defend the Washington Monument, as that's where civilians are being evacuated. There was actually a scrap part of this objective though. Originally, you could gradually fail to protect the monument, which would activate some pretty chilling radio messages from a soldier stationed at the monument. Here's some of that audio. Washington Monument evac site taking heavy fire from enemy armor and aircraft. We're down to 50% combat effectiveness. All call signs. This is a Washington Monument evac site. Be advised, our situation is critical. We can't take much more of this. We need more time to get these cities out of here. All call signs. This is a Washington Monument evac site. Our status is critical. We're still taking fire from enemy armor and aircraft. Please assist. We are taking heavy casualties at the evac site. Combat effectiveness is at 30%. We can't sustain much more damage. All call signs be advised. Call of Duty Online Call of Duty Online was a free-to-play Call of Duty game released exclusively in China. The game ran for 2013 all the way to August 2021, and it was basically Call of Duty Mobile before Call of Duty Mobile, as its multiplayer contained maps, weapons, death streaks, and kill streaks from the original Modern Warfare trilogy, the first three Black Ops games, Advanced Warfare, and Ghosts. It even had unique variations of classic maps like Tropical Estate, Chemical Plants, which was a snowy version of Storm from Modern Warfare 2, Freighter, which I mentioned earlier, and Favela Tropical. I don't really see the difference here. Call of Duty Online also had a campaign that takes place in the Modern Warfare Trilogy's timeline, though I don't think it actually fits in the timeline. Anyways, what most people know Call of Duty Online for is the Cyborg Rising mode, which was basically just Cyborg Zombies. This mode contained four remakes of the original Four World at War zombie maps, only this time it featured Robot Zombies, Robot Zombie Dogs, and Robot Zombie Juggernauts. You could also call for evac in these maps, which may have served as inspiration for Black Ops Cold War and Vanguard Zombies. There were multiple different modes in Cyborg Zombies, like Death March, where a team of players had to defend civilians from Cyborg Zombies, giant alien monsters, and alien UFOs, and Cyborg Evacuation, where players had to find civilians and escort them to transports to escape. Call of Duty Online also had some really insane weapons, like the Justice, which turned from an assault rifle to a tactical rifle, Freedom, which turned from a shotgun to a sniper rifle, Triumph, which turned from a light machine gun to dual shotguns, Titan, which turned from a submachine gun to a light machine gun, Hallucination, which turned from an assault rifle to a submachine gun, Death, which turned from an assault rifle to a shotgun, Doom, which turned from an assault rifle to a sniper rifle, 
and Mandate, which turned from an assault rifle to a shotgun. There was even a Battle Royale mode online, the first of the franchise's history. Released in 2017, this Battle Royale was heavily inspired by Hunger Games. It even had TV screens that showed recently defeated players. It also had a day and night cycle, and it allowed players to choose where they spawned, though the player limit to this was only 18. Call of Duty Online was also very horny on main, like extremely horny on main. Overall, Call of Duty Online was a crazy game that's sad to see go. By the way, did you guys know that Chris Evans starred in a live-action commercial for this game? Showtime Neversoft. Outside of the Ghosts multiplayer map, Showtime, you can actually see a strange cult-like monument with an enormous eyeball. This is a reference to the logo to Neversoft Studios, a gaming company that helped on Modern Warfare 3 and Ghosts, the latter being their last Call of Duty game before they were merged with Infinity Ward in 2014. Side note, did you know on Showtime you can actually see a poster for the map Retreat for Advanced Warfare? Kind of neat. Firebreak's fake past. In Black Ops 4, we see that Firebreak's backstory sees him killing his abusive father and saving his little sister. He then walks off with her after burning his childhood home to the ground. Your standard edgy backstory. Problem is, this goes against his Black Ops 3 backstory, in which it's mentioned that he attempted to kill his father with fire but failed while accidentally burning his sister in the process, and then was sent to jail. Maybe the events mentioned in Black Ops 3 are the canon events? But what we see in Black Ops 4 is just Firebreak's ideal version of the events? You know, what he wanted to happen? Or maybe Treyarch were just like, nobody's gonna notice this right, Con, who cares? Jernabog. So in the Black Ops Cold War Zombies map Die Machine, you can find a giant kaiju-like monster stomping around in the dark either on Round 45. Now this monster would later be revealed to be an Orda, a giant abomination known as an Elder God, who are the top of the food chain in the dark either. Before we found out what they were, though, people speculated that the creature was in fact Chernobog, a Slavic god. The only reason people thought this was because on the map you could find a message reading, Chernobog's wrath is coming. This was either just a red herring, or just nothing. My guess, some soldier saw Ordo and was like, this must be Chernobog or something, I don't know. Misty is Tank's daughter. This is a very popular theory that went around in the Black Ops 2 days, that my wife Misty from Black Ops 2 is actually the daughter of Tank Dempsey. This, of course, is ignoring how she's in her early 20s in 2025, while Ultimus Tank was in his mid-30s during World War II. And Primus Tank was in his mid-30s during World War I. So yeah, the theory isn't true. But they do jokingly reference it in the Black Ops 4 Zombies map, Togger Toten. Nightmares Mode. In Black Ops 3, there's a mode known as Nightmares Mode. It's basically the entirety of the Black Ops 3 campaign, but all the dialogue is turned off and replaced with an old scientist dude and a woman talking to each other about ancient gods raising the dead. This campaign tells the story of these ancient gods using zombies to destroy the world, while zombie hunters protect people. All while you play the exact same Black Ops 3 levels, but this time there's for zombies instead of uh, soldiers. But there will still be like, robot bosses and stuff, so it's not all zombies. This mode was universally despised, as it's just extremely boring and kinda lazy. There's not even achievements for this mode, so even if you complete it, you don't get anything from it. There's not even a multiplayer unlock or a campaign outfit or anything you get. There's just no reason to play it. I, I hate it. Kino de Toten Variations While you may love the Zombies map Kino de Toten, you probably don't know there exists two different unique variations of the map that most players have never played. The first being the version featured on the Nintendo Wii port of Black Ops, where underneath the turret in the theater, there's an AUG wall by. And in the iOS port of Kino de Toten, for some reason, they've replaced the normal stairs connecting the spawn room to the theater with a double staircase. Black Ops 3 Original Plans Originally, Black Ops 3 is going to be a semi-open world game focusing on a post-apocalyptic world ravaged by climate change. There'd be multiple factions involved in the campaign and have a kind of medieval aesthetic to it. At least, these are the rumors about Black Ops 3's original plot. There's been a lot of weird information about Black Ops 3's original plot online. While most info and rumors point to the game having a greater focus on climate change originally, it might have also connected more so with the original Black Ops games. You see, in a video released in 2014, James C. Burns, the voice actor for Woods, stated, Um, I got some information coming up uh, later on in a month about the next Black Ops, not next Black Ops, the next Call of Duty game. Now, when he said this, Black Ops 3 was in heavy development. So, it's possible he was talking about that game, but 
the video went up before Advanced Warfare had been announced yet, so was he talking about Advanced Warfare or Black Ops 3? Was he talking about any Call of Duty game? Was he just trolling? Regardless of all that, Black Ops 3 went through some very hectic development. More archetypes. This is a theory that Savannah Mason had more clones of Black Ops characters than just Mason, Woods, Rezanov, and Menendez. The only evidence for this is that in Blackout, something that in-universe Savannah Mason was very heavily involved with, there's Hudson, Weaver, and Sergei from Black Ops 1, and David Mason from Black Ops 2. So people have speculated that she had cloned those guys too. I like how this is true, she cloned her own father who should still be alive at this point. Also, she cloned Sergei. Like, like why? Also, Sergei and Black Ops 4 still can't talk, so I guess she cloned him, but was like, you know, when he died, he couldn't speak because his tongue was cut out, so, uh, you know, cut it out again. We want to be as accurate as possible. Atlas Sword. This is a scrapped weapon from Advanced Warfare that would have appeared in the campaign and Exozombies. I would have included it in the scrapped weapons entry, but this sword is notable for still appearing in the game. Kinda. In the PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360 versions of Advanced Warfare, you can very rarely see Atlas soldiers who have the Atlas sword on their backs, but they never pull them out and use them. I can't find a single image of them, unfortunately, but take my word, they exist. Hacker Game Mode Hacker was a scrapped game mode from Black Ops 2 that would have been a spin on Free For All. Players would fight to control and hack AGRs located around the map, and whoever got the most kills with these AGRs won the match. This mode was scrapped very late in development, so late in fact that it was actually playable in the PlayStation 3 version of Black Ops 2 and the version 29824-6 and earlier, though you could only access this mode through mods. Exozombies is canon. This is a theory that Exozombies is a direct sequel to Advanced Warfare's campaign. The only real evidence for this is that Gideon from the campaign shows up in the first cutscene of the game on the map Riot, where he then gets killed by zombies. The only problem with this theory is that Gideon is part of Atlas and Exozombies, something that he is not exactly part of at the end of Advanced Warfare's campaign. Modern Warfare 2 Remastered Golden Deagle In the Modern Warfare 2 campaign remastered version of the level of their own accord, you can find a golden desert eagle hidden behind a crate with a teddy bear towards the beginning of the level. This desert eagle has the classic COD 4 design, and this easter egg is the only instance of gold camo being in any version of Modern Warfare 2. Reused Modern Warfare Plots and Animations Now, Call of Duty has been known to recycle animations for minor stuff, and uh, that's fine. I'm not making fun of developers for this, as it's completely normal, and barely anyone notices, and every game studio does it. Though there is one instance in Call of Duty Ghosts that I think is very noticeable and kind of funny for being noticeable. You see, the final section of the level Ghost Stories, where Hesh picks up Logan and Elias rushes over to help carry him, uses the exact same animation from the Modern Warfare 2 level, Endgame, where Price helps Soap up and Nick Light rushes to help carry him over. Again, nothing to be ashamed about, it's a common thing in the industry, I just thought it was a little fun to point that out. However, in Advanced Warfare, there's something a bit more noticeable. They don't reuse animations, they reuse pretty much an entire plot. You see, both the Modern Warfare 3 level Dust to Dust and the Advanced Warfare level Terminus have extremely similar plots. Both levels begin with the main two characters arriving at a tall enemy hideout or base in heavy duty armor and, you know, big guns. Both levels have the two characters lose their armor midway through the fight, storming up the building. And when losing the armor, the player character doesn't remove his own armor, the other character removes it for him. Something stops the non-playable character from going after the main villain, so you have to go alone with no weapons. The main character then kills the main villain, but is hurt pretty bad in doing so. And the main character is also saved by the non-playable character who somehow got there in time. Only in Modern Warfare 3, Yuri dies, while in Advanced Warfare, Gideon lives. Frost, Logan, and Burns in third person. Despite all being characters we'd never normally see in third person, or even speak, these three Infinity Ward protagonists are all viewable in very specific scenes. For Frost, you can see him very briefly as the camera pans down towards him at the beginning of the Spec Ops mission, Black Ice. His model is that of one of the Winter Weather Delta Force soldiers seen briefly in the mission down the rabbit hole. For Marcus Burns, the protagonist of the level Mind the Gap from Modern Warfare 3, you can see him very briefly as the level begins as the camera pans down to him. 
pretty sure he just uses a standard SAS model for multiplayer. And finally, for Logan Walker, the protagonist of Call of Duty Ghosts, you can briefly see him in the mission Birds of Prey exiting a Black Hawk helicopter during the portion of the level where he plays Pirate 5-0. Despite concepts and artwork of his entire body existing, Infinity New War just decided to use a helicopter pilot for his model in the scene, most likely just because of how brief it was. Cormac's Great Grandfather Originally, Marcus Howard in Call of Duty World War II was named Cormac. This was a direct reference to Cormac from Advanced Warfare, who is also voiced by Russell Richardson. Because of this, some people would speculated that Cormac is actually a descendant of Marcus Howard, and I guess by extension, Lewis Howard from Vanguard, who is also voiced by Russell Richardson. Before Vanguard, I'd say, you know, maybe. I mean, who's to say? But since World War II is kid into Vanguard, Modern Warfare 2019, and the Black Ops series, I find it very hard to believe that Advanced Warfare is also canon. World at War Beta A lot of people think Black Ops 3 was the first Call of Duty game to have a public beta. Well, long before Infinite Warfare's beta, World War II's beta, and Modern Warfare's beta, there was the World at War public beta. This beta lasted from October 2008 to the exact day World at War came out. You could get access to this beta by receiving a token via pre-ordering the game, or by registering on the Call of Duty website. This beta was only available for Xbox 360 and PC, but most people would agree the 360 beta was the definitive version to play, as for some reason the PC beta didn't get any updates. Meanwhile, the 360 beta got two level cap increases, more guns to unlock, more challenges to complete, more perks to unlock, and eventually was released publicly to download. No tokens required. There were three maps available in the beta, Castle, Macon, and Roundhouse, and a couple of modes like Team Deathmatch, Free For All, Search and Destroy, and hardcore variants of Team Deathmatch and Search and Destroy. Modern Warfare 2 Remastered Multiplayer There's been leaks and rumors about how Modern Warfare 2 Remastered was originally a complete game, but Activision were unhappy with its multiplayer, so they scrapped it and just allowed the release for the campaign. Activision has since denied that Modern Warfare 2 Remastered multiplayer exists, but like I said, a ton of reliable leakers have said otherwise. Now why were they unhappy with the multiplayer? Well, they might not have been. Sure, they could have been conflicted on whether or not to balance the multiplayer or not, but I, and what many others think happened, was that Activision looked at how Modern Warfare Remastered multiplayer took players away from Infinite Warfare's multiplayer, so instead of splitting up their players again, they just said screw it and suck a Black Ops 4 multiplayer. Operation Kingfish The short film titled Makarov Operation Kingfish was developed by the company We Can Pretend and was funded by Activision. It tells the story of what happened to Soap and Price between the events of COD 4 and Modern Warfare 2. In the film, Task Force 141, which consists of Soap, Price, Ghost, and Roach, infiltrate an inner circle base in Ukraine, while Delta Force operatives Sandman and Frost Watch over the team with a sniper. Eventually, the mission goes haywire, and Price chooses to be left behind as he provides covering fire for the rest of Task Force 141, which explains why he's imprisoned in Modern Warfare 2. It's then revealed by General Shepard that Kingfish, the person they were sent to kill, is named Makarov. The short film was shown off at Call of Duty XP and was met with acclaim from fans. Verrucked MG42 In the World at War Zombies map Verrucked, if you get out of the map using Noclip, you can find a mounted MG42 inside the fountain in the middle of the map. And by inside, I really mean inside, as it's completely underneath the map. And while you actually can use it surprisingly, it's very difficult to kill zombies with it. It's been speculated that this isn't really an intentional easter egg, more so that it was just Treyarch testing the mounting system in zombies. As originally in World at War Zombies, you were meant to mount weapons on certain walls which is explaining why some weapons like the bar are known as deployable bar instead of just a normal bar. This easter egg is also in the Black Ops port in the map, though the Black Ops 3 version of the map actually replaced the MG42 with a statue of a little girl, most likely a reference to Samantha. And side note, the World at War version of Verruckt also has a poster of Quick Revive, though the icon for the perk is completely different from its in-game icon. This was fixed in later ports of the map. Call of Duty Real-Time Card Game in the late 2000s, Activision worked with Upper Deck Entertainment to create a collectible card game inspired by Call of Duty. Prototypes of the card game exist, but ultimately the game was cancelled in 2008. Uplink Skins In the Black Ops 2 map Uplink, both the SDC and SEAL Team 6 multiplayer factions use in-game models that are never used on any other multiplayer map. The models remain the same for the most part, but their colors have been drastically lightened. While it's never been confirmed why this was done, most seem to think it was done because playtesters thought it was way too difficult to see players on the map with their dark colors. Global Thermonuclear War This is perhaps the most famous scrapped multiplayer mode in Call of Duty history. 
It originates from Modern Warfare 2 and got extremely far in development. So far that in the game guide that came with the hardened and prestige editions of Modern Warfare 2, there are actually tips and photos of global thermonuclear war. The mode consists of two teams battling over a tactical nuke in the middle of a map. Once the nuke was captured, a 40 second countdown begins and eventually it goes off. It's unknown why this mode was scrapped, but you can actually play it via mods. There's also a hardcore variant of the mode, and it was intended to make its debut in Modern Warfare 3, but was scrapped yet again. Black Ops Modern Warfare 2 Co-op It's a shame that World at War and Black Ops 3 are the only Call of Duty campaigns with co-op options. That wasn't going to originally be the case, however, as both Modern Warfare 2 and Black Ops experimented with co-op campaigns during their development, though ultimately both were scrapped. While not official, you can download mods to make Black Ops' campaign co-op, but it has its fair share of bugs. Border War Skin In 2020, the operator D-Day at Modern Warfare received a skin titled Border War. This caused a little bit of controversy as many people saw this as Infinity Ward glorifying the border crisis. Especially since the skin's description read, show them the error of their ways and make them pay with D-Day's Border War Operator skin. And so in July 2020, the skin was renamed to Home on the Range, with its description changed to Play along with the deer and the antelope with the home. And then that's it. It's home on the range. It's kind of a weird description. Aliens in Kino. In the zombies map Kino to Toten, you can find canisters filled with strange creatures scattered around the map. I and many others back in the day thought these were just aliens that Group 935 had captured and were researching. This was later confirmed to be not true, as eventually it was revealed that those were just crawler zombies. You know, I probably should have realized that. Black Hawk Down. In the original version of the map Crash from Call of Duty 4, instead of a Chinook C9 helicopter crash in the middle of the map, it was a Black Hawk helicopter originally. This got pretty far into development and even appears in early builds of the game. This was an obvious reference to the film Black Hawk Down. Don't look up who Ian McGregor's character is based on the film, you'll never be able to watch that film the same way. Scrapped Killstreaks Most Call of Duty games have their fair share of scrapped killstreaks. These were either scrapped because of time restraints, were too overpowered, too underpowered, too similar to other killstreaks, there were too many killstreaks, or were just broken. In Call of Duty 4, there was the AC-130 and the Harrier Strike. In World at War, there was the Air Strike, which was replaced with the Artillery Strike. There was also a faction-based killstreak system that was scrapped. After Attack Dogs, there was meant to be a fourth killstreak that would change depending on which faction you were fighting on. For the Red Army, there were the Kashka Rocket Launcher. For the Marine Raiders, it was the B-17 Flying Fortress. For the Nazis, they had the Carpet Bomber. And the Imperial Japanese had the Kamikaze. B-17 armed and en route! Your time to die for the Emperor is now! Our Katyushas are ready to rain death! Bombers above, awaiting your command! In Modern Warfare 2, there was a heavy armor kill streak, which was just the Juggernaut. In Black Ops, there was the AC-130. In Modern Warfare 3, there was the Dragonfly Drone. Harrier Strike, Little Bird Scout, Tank, A-10 Thunderbolt 2, Heli Sniper, and Laser Designated Strike. Dragonfly Drone standing by. Harrier's waiting for your mark. Repeat, Harrier's waiting for your mark. Little Bird Scout, ready for orders. What's on one, one acknowledge. Emergency airdrop, show us where you want it. There was also the emergency airdrop, but you could technically get that in drop zone. So, I thought I'd mention it. In Call of Duty Ghosts, there was the Spitfire Drone, Grenade Crate, Sam Turret, Odin Battle Officer, UGV, A-10, EMP, Strafe Run, GPS Buddy, Halogen Gas, and the Cerberus Drone. Friendly EMP detonated. Their electronics are offline. Cerberus Drone active. GPS Buddy active. Grenade Crate ready. Sam Turret ready for deployment. Odin Battle Officer ready for commands. Friendly UGV inbound. Spitfire drone available. A-10 available. Check your six! We've got halogen gas inbound! In Modern Warfare 2019, there was the EMP drone and Dead Man's Streak, which was Dead Man's Hand for Modern Warfare 3. Holy crap, thank god this didn't make it into the game. And finally, in Black Ops Cold War, there were attack dogs. Warzone Ghosts. In the build-up to the Halloween event, Haunting of Verdansk, Players reported hearing ghosts in several different spots on Verdansk, and when the event began, players could find ghosts all over the map and were even subjected to jump scares from opening crates. Human Torch In Call of Duty 2, it's possible to perform a glitch 
where if an enemy player is on fire and if you throw a grenade at them, they might pick up the grenade while on fire and throw it, despite currently burning to death. This will also extend the soldier's life. This is only possible in a very few select moments of the campaign. Modern Warfare Zombies Early in Modern Warfare 2019's development, Infinity War toyed with the idea of having a Zombies mode instead of reviving Spec Ops. All we know about this cancelled mode was that it was going to involve robots or something like that. Why was this mode dropped? Well, because Infinity War said that it wouldn't blend well with the realistic setting of Modern Warfare. Yep, the realistic setting of Modern Warfare. Galactic Warfare. This is an extremely popular mod for Call of Duty 4 that was created over a decade ago. It basically turns Call of Duty 4 into a Star Wars first-person shooter. It's a total conversion mod, so there's Star Wars sounds, weapons, locations, player models, etc. The custom maps in this mod are Tatooine, Anchorhead, Cloud City, Rebellion, Bestine, Junlin Day, Junlin Dusk, and Not a Cave. It's still an incredibly popular mod today, as it should be. I mean, this is an incredibly impressive. If you have COD 4 on PC, you should check this mod out. Police Warfare. This was a fan-made concept trailer that apparently was actually pitched to Activision. In 2012, a trailer came out stating that the next Call of Duty entry would be a downloadable only title called Police Warfare. Many people believed that it was legit, but it wasn't. But like I said, apparently it was pitched to Activision, but I'm gonna take a shot in the dark here and say that if it was, it was rejected. The trailer stated that the game would have vehicles, a heist game mode, grappling hooks, and a class system, which would make it a very different Call of Duty game. And before you go, oh, did this inspire Battlefield Hardline? No, that was a revival of a cancelled Battlefield game known as Battlefield Urban Combat. Dead of the Night Chandelier Easter Egg there's an unsolved easter egg in the Black Ops 4 Zombies map, Dead of the Night, that involves the chandeliers. According to players, there's about 9 different chandeliers that make a noise if you throw a wraith fire at them. No other item will do this if thrown at them. Not only that, but ZI600 on Reddit discovered this. This led some people to suggest to look into the decompiled Black Ops 4 game scripts to see if they can figure out what to do after this step. And apparently in the scripts, it says that the chandeliers are supposed to fall after, after a certain step. In fact, you can actually see them fall the music video for the map. As of right now, there's been no leads on it in months, and it still remains a pretty obscure, unsolved Call of Duty Zombies mystery. Time travel? So this is a weird one. So in the final weeks of the original Verdansk lifespan, the outbreak event was going on. The story behind this event was that in 1984, a ship known as the Vaudenoy, sure, I'm going to go with that, left Rebirth Island containing a bunch of Nova 6, but then the ship just disappeared. Nobody knows why it did, it just did. And then, 37 years later, it just randomly shows up again near Verdansk, surrounded by a mysterious thunderstorm. Then the ship crashes into Verdansk, and zombies begin infesting the city, and so eventually the entirety of Verdansk is nuked to contain the zombie threat. So this whole thing leads to questions. The first being, how did the ship get to Verdansk after disappearing 37 years ago? Some have said that time travel could be a good explanation. Maybe it is. I don't think it really matters though, because this brings in the second question. Is this even canon? Personally, I don't think it is. I say this because I don't think Modern Warfare 2022 is going to be mentioning how Verdansk got a nuke to wipe out zombies. Seems a bit over the top for even modern Call of Duty. Also now, Rebirth Island is next to Verdansk, so I, I, I guess it just moved, or maybe it was always there, I don't know. I, I, I barely play Warzone. High Tech North Korea In the Advanced Warfare level Induction, you battle the North Korean Army. This level takes place in 2054 and has the North Korean Army using laser guns, molten metal rocket launchers, Wait, what? The mayhem from Advanced Warfare is based on a real thing? Huh. Oh yeah, and uh, giant drone swarms, uh, some big floating Havoc mobile or weapons platform. They also have insanely high-tech helmets. If this was any other big nation, then most people could buy this. But this is North Korea, a country that in 2022 is still using Cold War era weapons. Pretty massive leap in technology in just 32 years. And I know what you're thinking. Uh, this is just really nitpicky. Yeah, it is. It is. 
the Call of Duty movie. In 2015, Activision announced it was creating a cinematic universe based on Call of Duty, with the first film in the series being released in 2018 or 2019, and it would be directed by Stefano Soloma. And in 2018, a sequel was already being planned, with a script being written by Joe Robert Cole. And then not a single movie happened. In 2020, Soloma stated in an interview that the Call of Duty movies were no longer a priority for Activision, so it doesn't seem like we'll be getting a COD film anytime soon. Oh, yeah, this happened while I was making the video. Turns out Dwayne Johnson is going to be starring in a movie based on a, quote, badass video game franchise. People originally thought he'd make Gears of War, but apparently there's been heavy rumors about it actually being a Call of Duty movie. Woo! People want to know how I'm surviving these Call of Duty Black Ops 3 zombies. It's not about fancy weapons or running fast. Heck, my buddy Doug here will train three miles a day. How'd that work out for you, bud? Now, I'm gonna tell you what you gotta do. Drink Mountain Dew. What? Mountain Dew? That don't destroy zombies. Yes, it do. Dew gives you XP times dose. Do it! See you later, Doug. Unlock double XP for Call of Duty Black Ops 3 Zombies with Dew and Doritos. Black Ops 4 Nuketown Zombies. In Black Ops 4, there's a zombie map called Alpha Omega, which is a remake of Newtown Zombies. This is not what this entry is about, actually. This entry is instead about how on the map Nuketown, you can activate an Easter egg in which a rocket launches from the center of the map, explodes in a giant purple explosion, which will then turn all the mannequins around the map into zombies. This, if you've been paying attention to the iceberg, is done by destroying all the heads of all the mannequins within a certain time limit. World at War Ghosts You can hear the voices of the undead in several different multiplayer maps in World at War. Some of the biggest examples are from the map Dome, Hangar Which a uh, side note about Hangar, there's a dead Red Army soldier on this map, so I guess this dude got captured during the Soviet Japanese War. Cliffside. In Asylum. Nazi Zombie Lawsuit There is a rumor that Activision was suing Rebellion Developments due to their game franchise, Sniper Elite, having a Nazi Zombie mode. There is, though, absolutely no evidence to back up this rumor. Probably because Activision doesn't own the rights to the concept of Nazi Zombies. Vacant License Plate In all four variations of the map Vacant, although there's technically more if you want to count like the Grand War map and Warzone, but let's, let's just keep it at four. There's a truck with a unique license plate that changes with each game. In Call of Duty 4, the license plate says, well, <laughs> the Arsler. This was changed to Modern Warfare Remastered and Modern Warfare 2 and Modern Warfare 2019 to just not have that. Frost's Fate. There's cut dialogue for the Modern Warfare 3 level down the rabbit hole from Captain Price about Frost, even name dropping him. 
This proves that originally Frost would have been with the rest of Team Metal in that mission, and might have actually been the playable character. If he wasn't the playable character, well, then he most likely would have met the same fate as the rest of Team Metal in that level. Since he was scrapped from that level, now he just kind of like disappears after certain points. I guess he got reassigned or something. Ghostly Room In the Finest Hour level, Underground Passage, the player can find a mysterious room with a teddy bear, a sticky teddy bear grenade, and a ghostly cradle where you can hear a ghostly baby cry. And then, like, an actual ghost will show up. So that's pretty crazy. Also, there's a huge rat in this room. There's just a lot going on in this room. It's pretty crazy. And if the players access this room after saving some soldiers later in the level, another ghostly voice will appear in the room asking for a Private Ryan. Yet again, another reference to saving Private Ryan. Semper Fi Voices After the Marine gets killed by a booby trap in the World at War mission Semper Fi, Strange voices can be heard coming from a monument that you can access by turning right instead of going straight with the rest of your squad. Peter's Grave. In the iOS game, Call of Duty Zombies, players can get a unique melee weapon, the shovel. Well, unique at the time, uh, nowadays there have been like a million different shovel melee weapons. After opening up every part of the map Shinonuma, you can find a grave called Peter's Grave. If the player uses the shovel to dig up that grave, they get a free Wonder Waff. And the shovel is also not a reskin knife, it actually does more damage than the knife, though it does less damage than the Bowie knife. Satanic Goats. In the Modern Warfare map Livestock, players can activate an easter egg by destroying certain items around the map. Doing so will summon demon goats that will kill the players. <laughs> fifth Team Metal member. Weirdly enough, there's a fifth member of Team Metal the main characters of the Delta Force portion of Modern Warfare 3's campaign. His name is Gator, and he's only seen in one mission, Iron Lady. He even has plot armor along the rest of Team Metal. Villa Screaming In the Black Ops multiplayer map, Villa, players can hear screaming the map's soundtrack. At least that's what some players report hearing. I, I wasn't able to hear it. Um, actually, like a quick, quick edit. Uh, Django Peppers, uh, the mad legend himself, Last year, on August 18th, saw my, uh, the original Call of Duty Iceberg video, heard the villa screams, and, um, realized there's no documentation of it online. So the mad legend himself did it. Uh, insane props to this dude. What an absolute legend. I'll link him in the, I'll link the, uh, video in the description. Go give him a thanks. Because, because I didn't want to buy Black Ops 1 for Steam just to record, uh, the, the screams, if there are any. Find the Secret This is a secret achievement in the Black Ops 4 zombie map Togder Toten, in which players need to swim to a secret area where they'll see the planet Mars. An obvious reference to the Shangri-La and Mars theory. Black Ops 4's Campaign In May 2020, a video from the cancelled Black Ops 4 campaign was leaked. It showed Ajax fighting enemies with the help of AI allies. In July 2020, a Reddit user Nocturnal2002 was able to get access to a February 2017 build of Black Ops 4, which includes screenshots and descriptions of several campaign levels for Black Ops 4. The video that was uploaded to Reddit showing all these things was actually taken down by a copyright strike by Activision, confirming that this is a legit leak. I was able to archive it before it was taken down, but I don't think I can upload it anywhere since I'd rather not be sued by Activision. But I will tell you what it said and use images from the Call of Duty wiki, which I think are okay to use, since Activision isn't rushing in to destroy fandom. 
this campaign was actually going to be pretty large with 18 missions for both campaigns. And yes, there were going to be two campaigns, one for the Free People's Army and the other for the World United Nations. The campaign was going to be co-op centered with two teams of two battling against each other for certain objectives. Each campaign would have mostly the same levels with different objectives, cutscenes, and stories. Some of these levels include Prologue, where players would either save or kill a VIP. Data Control, where players would either steal or sabotage important data. Data Escape, where you'd have to stop the enemy from escaping with the data. Snatch and Grab, where players would have to escape Zurich, Switzerland. Air Assault Convoy, where you'd have to protect or destroy a convoy and Resource Gather, where players had to extract resources from a base or kill the enemy team trying to do that. There were also four other levels we know of, but we don't actually know what they would have been about. These were Big Brother, Cairo, Lodge, and Breaching. This campaign was scrapped so late in development that there was even a Megaplex set for this mode. Also, every vehicle available to drive at the launch of Blackout originated from the campaign. This entire campaign was titled Career, and it was scrapped in favor of Blackout. There's actually leftover material from this campaign in Black Ops 4. For example, pretty much all the cutscenes for Specialists HQ were made for this campaign. Well, all the cutscenes involving the Specialists, all the cutscenes involving the clones of Mason, Woods, etc., those were created for a Specialist HQ. You can even see Ruin Superior in Ruin's cutscene with a Free People's Army armband, so... Yeah, this was from the original campaign. Raven Software was then tasked to create a new campaign for Black Ops 4, within a year of its launch. There were multiple prototypes built, but we only know of two levels from the second attempt. The first is Vengeance, which would have had Seraph fighting in Singapore, and the second being Outback Roadhouse, where Battery would rescue Torque in Australia. But then, this was replaced with Training Missions. This is what the leaked gameplay was actually from. These would basically be larger scale special HQ levels that would actually feel like levels and have objectives. But then these were scrapped. So yes, there were three different attempts at making a Black Ops 4 campaign, and the end result was Specialist HQ. Zombies is canon. This is a theory that the Zombies timeline in Black Ops is canon to the Black Ops campaign. This is mainly due to the fact that Roebuck, a character from World at War, is mentioned in a Zombies radio in Black Ops 4. Also, Woods has 115 tattooed on his arm, this being a reference to the element that created the zombies, though the latter is more than likely just an easter egg. There's also the Blight Father and zombies that show up in Recon's Special HQ level, and the They're Coming sticky notes found in Black Ops 2's multiplayer map Standoff at the campaign level Odysseus. And before someone says, well Cold War made zombies canon, it didn't. Well, okay, I guess Bell fights zombies in like an MK Ultra thing, but, but besides that, you know what I mean. There's just two timelines, the normal timeline and the zombies timeline, though Vanguard's ending does confirm the Nazis in the normal timeline were interested in making zombies, but in this timeline they failed, while in the zombies timeline, Der Anfang happens and Cold War Zombies happens. Secret Hitler Boss Fight This is a popular debunked rumor from the very first zombie map, Dr. Untoden, and is probably the first ever zombies rumor ever. The rumor was that if you managed to get to round 100, a zombie Hitler would appear and you had to fight him. Missing Ghosts in Multiplayer In the Ghosts campaign, there are several ghost members who are confirmed to have died before the game starts. These include Chris Green, aka Torch, and Ridian Poe, aka Grimm. This theory states that two of the three characters shown in the Extinction Squad Pack image, a cosmetic DLC for Ghosts, are actually Torch and Grimm. This is almost 100% not true in just fanfiction. Victor Ramos's Fate In the Ghosts level Federation Day, the player interrogates a man named Victor H. Ramos. However, while questioning him, the building is bombed by Rourke and the characters are forced to escape. No matter what happens, the Ramos will die in the aftermath of the explosion. However, the player actually has full control on how Ramos dies. In the very few seconds between the bomb going off and your teammates ordering you to retreat, you can actually shoot and kill Ramos while he's trying to hide under his desk without any penalty. Battery's Grandfather Aaron Baker, aka Battery, is a specialist from Black Ops 3 and 4. In Black Ops 3, it's mentioned in her bio that she comes from a long line of Spec Ops soldiers. And in Black Ops Cold War, there's an operator named John Baker, who's part of the Navy SEALs. Many people believe him to be Battery's grandfather, as only two people can have the same last name. 
Joseph Allen was a traitor. This theory is how in Modern Warfare 2, Joseph Allen was actually convinced of Makarov's goals while being undercover. This explains why he never breaks character during the massacre and no Russian, despite how he could have easily gunned down Makarov and his men before they opened fire on the civilians. And yeah, I get people will go like, well, you know, he just was really dedicated to the mission. He wasn't going to go against orders. Dude, he could have saved all those people's lives and stopped World War III. Let Lev's Wrath in the Call of Duty 2 level of Red Army training, if you disobey Colonel Letlib's orders and don't pick up a weapon, he will eventually shoot and kill you, claiming that you're a traitor. Kill the traitor! Captain Price dies. This is a theory that Captain Price dies shortly after the final level in Modern Warfare 3, as he's heavily injured and covered in broken glass. Not only that, but authorities and enemy forces are approaching the hotel where he's at, and that level takes place in the United Arab Emirates, and they're not exactly what I'd call fans of people bringing giant guns to hotels and killing a bunch of hotel security, and, uh, you know, he's probably gonna get the death penalty. Also, somebody pointed this out in the original Call of Duty Iceberg video, but the final level of Modern Warfare 3 is titled Dust to Dust, which is a reference to the saying, Ashes to Ashes, Dust to Dust. Everything starts from nothing, and turns back to nothing. So, yeah, he, he's probably dead. Shadows of Evil Ride As part of a marketing campaign for Black Ops 3, a roller coaster attraction based on Shadows of Evil was, was put up in Los Angeles' Six Flags during Fright Fest. But, due to this being a promotional event, after that year's Fright Fest, it went away for good. But thankfully, the ride has been archived forever on the Call of Duty YouTube channel with a POV VR experience that I recommend you guys check out if you're interested. All Gillied Up Ghosts This is pretty simple, but in the Call of Duty 4 level, All Gillied Up, and I assume by extension the bottom of a remastered version of the level, you can hear ghostly children in the remains of a playground as you pass through it. Modern Warfare 2 USP-45 in Modern Warfare 3 There is a rumor that the secret USP-45 you can find in the Modern Warfare 3 Spec Ops mission, Stay Sharp, actually used the Modern Warfare 2 model of the gun instead of the Modern Warfare 3 model. I thought it wasn't true, and even made fun of it in the original video, but no, apparently I was wrong. Um, the USP-45 in this level does use the Modern Warfare 2 model for some very strange reason. Call of Duty XP Call of Duty XP was a Call of Duty convention held twice, once in 2011 and once in 2016. It had your average convention things like panels and stuff like that, but it also featured a life-sized recreation of the Modern Warfare 2 map Scrapyard for paintball matches, Juggernaut Sumo Wrestling, a recreation of the Modern Warfare 2 Spec Ops mission The Pit, performances from Kanye West and Dropkick Murphys, Zombies-themed Laser Tag, Nuketown Paintball, and during Call of Duty XP 2016, you could play Infinite Warfare's multiplayer and Black Ops 3's fourth DLC early. What's going on? Good afternoon, sir. I need you to hold up a second, all right? Your convoy's awaiting instructions from Overlord. No, I'll copy that. Hangar 18 Aliens In the Black Ops multiplayer map Hangar 18, which is supposed to be Area 51, but not Area 51 if you catch my drift, you can find bodies of aliens hidden away. This is an obvious reference to the conspiracies that Area 51 is hiding aliens. Oh, Who's Bowser oh, oh, Who's that oh, great oh, ape right there? Sue Griva. Oh, is it dinner time? Oh, is it dinner time? Oh, I think it is. I think it is. Oh, yeah. oh, 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 Shooting Kennedy. There is a rumor that one of the scrapped Black Ops levels would have had you play as Mason killing JFK. This is more than likely fake. I can't imagine that going over well. Though, this level still technically happens in the universe because Mason does actually end up killing JFK in uh, the Call of Duty universe. But hey, if you're interested in this fake scrapped level, there's always JFK Reloaded. Current Events Aggregate on September 29th, 2015, the official Twitter account of Call of Duty was temporarily renamed to Current Events Aggregate. This was a viral marketing technique to hype up Black Ops 3. However, then they began reporting on fake terrorist attacks. 
Yeah, for example, they reported a fake attack in Singapore that relates to the events of Black Ops 3. And you know, it turns out there's not a lot of people out there who are fans of reporting on fake terrorist attacks. Kind of, It's just kind of something that, like, nobody's really a fan of. Due to the backlash this received, Activision came out and confirmed it was just a viral marketing campaign and apologized. Kaiju Bear In the Modern Warfare map, Station, you can activate an easter egg by shooting a bunch of clocks that will spawn a kaiju-sized teddy bear that will fall from the sky and then blow up outside the map. Modern Warfare 3 Ghosts On the map Sanctuary, if a player lays down near some graves, they can actually hear the ghosts of the family from the level Davis Family Vacation. Muchalaka. The Muchalaka, also known as Hitler's Stonehenge, is a mysterious monument created by the Nazis. Many conspiracy theorists believe it had something to do with Nazi alien technology, though, I mean, let's be real here, it, it wasn't. Though because it's tied to conspiracies, it's actually made two appearances in Call of Duty. The first being in the World at War Zombies map, Doris, where it's part of the Flytrap Easter Egg, and in the World War II map, Operation Arcane, you can find similar monuments around the map. This map takes place in a secret Nazi lab, with a bunch of, like, wonder weapons and stuff, so it's possible the conspiracies are true. At least in the Call of Duty canon. Crossover characters. Starting Call of Duty Ghosts, we've seen many different characters from other franchises cross over into Call of Duty. These include Michael Myers from Halloween, and the Predator from the Alien and Predator franchise in Call of Duty Ghosts, Billy the Puppet from Saw, and Leatherface from the Texas Chainsaw Massacre in Modern Warfare, Judge Dredd from, well, Judge Dredd, Ghostface from Scream, and Frank the Bunny from Donnie Darko in Black Ops Cold War. That's honestly one of the weirdest crossovers I've ever seen in anything. Baker's clown skin is also a direct reference to the disguises worn by Joker and his henchmen in the beginning of The Dark Knight, so I guess you could count that too. John Rambo from the Rambo franchise and John McClane from Die Hard also make appearances in Cold War, and you could even get them in Call of Duty Mobile. Their audio lines are taken directly from their films, and they sound horrible. Time for the real thing, Bill. All you gotta do is pull the trigger. Cute toy. Now to use a handgun. Come on, baby, come on, baby, come on, baby. Yeah, I'm still here. There you go. I'm coming to get you. I'm coming to get you. Man the gun! Man the gun! Alright. Let's go. Let's go on from here. And most recently in Call of Duty Vanguard, there's a skin that's. Let's be real here. It's basically just a bootleg Punisher skin for Wade Jackson. And there's also the Attack on Titan skin, based on Levi Ackerman for Daniel. And uh, yeah, it looks pretty bad. I honestly think a skin for Tanaka in Cold War, based on my wife Hanji Zoe, would have made more sense. Because, I mean, the whole, like, eye patch thing, but whatever, I guess. I guess I should also mention here that you can get the original Modern Warfare Captain Price in Blackout if you pre-ordered Modern Warfare. Woods also makes an appearance in Modern Warfare if you pre-ordered Cold War, followed by Arthur Kingsley showing up in Cold War if you pre-ordered Vanguard. Also, they just randomly put Captain Price in Cold War one day for... I have no idea. World War II Battle Royale Found deep in the game files of World War II, players were able to discover a scrapped Battle Royale mode. This would have been the first Battle Royale mode in the main series. Not much else is known about this cancelled mode, however, as it was scrapped pretty early in development. Nikolai Redesign For some strange reason, Nikolai got a redesign in Modern Warfare 3. This wouldn't be as noticeable if it wasn't for the fact that Modern Warfare 3 takes place literally hours after Modern Warfare 2. So it's kind of like, what happened to this dude? I mean, I guess he got plastic surgery on the ride to India between games. Vanguard Quran Vanguard was hit with controversy when it was released, as players discovered pages of the Quran scattered on the floor of the zombies map Duranfong. Some of these pages were even stained with blood. Activision then removed the pages from the game in response, and apologized on Twitter saying, It was not supposed to exist as it appeared in the game. Whatever that means. The Volksturm The Volksturm was one of the Nazis' final attempts at surviving the war. In 1944, Hitler ordered the creation of a national militia made up of children, teenagers, sick people, and the elderly. Basically, anyone who wasn't in the military at the time was now in the military. This was a last-ditch effort to get enough soldiers to fend off the Allies, who were quickly making their way into Germany. They were actually going to show up in at least one World at War level towards the end of the campaign. 
There were even models of them made, though they were eventually scrapped from the game. The Reznov does briefly mention them in the final game. Carrington in Black Ops 3. In the Black Ops 3 multiplayer map, Infection, you can see the classic Call of Duty map Carrington on the side of the map perfectly recreated in the Black Ops 3 engine. This led some players to believe it would be eventually released in Black Ops 3 multiplayer, but it never did. Teddy bears are always watching. In Black Ops 2 and 3, the teddy bears that sit on top of the mystery box in Call of Duty Zombies will occasionally look up and look around for the player before going back to sleep. This means that the teddy bears are either alive or possessed by something. There's been no explanation for this in the zombies lore, so it's safe to say that this is probably just an easter egg, not meant to be taken as canon. Swamp Monster In the Black Ops 3 zombie map, Zetsubo no Shima, you can spot a giant kaiju-sized monster outside of the map on round 50. It's very hard to see, but if you look in a certain part of the map, you can just barely see a giant mass moving across the swamp. Operation Cherrybis. Cherrybit? Charibis. Charibit. Charibit. Charib Operation C. This is a very weird plot that was teased in Black Ops 1's terminals, but was seemingly made non-canon with the release of Black Ops 2. Basically, Operation C was an operation taking place in 1978, 10 years after Black Ops, where the Special Activities Division and MI6 both agreed that Alex Mason should be killed, as he was deemed too mentally unstable and was a threat to national security. Hudson and Weaver were also ordered to be killed, as they had backed Mason, but we don't actually know much about what happened during the operation. We know that the trio, Hudson, Mason, and Weaver, traveled to South Africa to locate Daniel Clark's brother. We also know that Weaver's niece was hired to seduce and kill Mason, and we know that the operation was meant to be kept a secret from most of the CIA, as Hudson had way too many friends there, so they'd be a little bit unhappy if they found out they were trying to kill him. And finally, we know that CIA analyst Ryan Jackson, along with a young SAS operative named Jonathan Price, who people speculate is Captain Price's father, were made the advisors of the task force meant to kill the three. And that's it. For a long time, it was just kind of assumed that this was made non-canon for three different reasons. The first being that both Mason and Hudson worked with the US government in the 1980s during Black Ops 2. The second being the fact that in Black Ops Declassified, it was revealed that Woods had escaped from prison in 1972 and began doing missions with the CIA in 1975. So why wasn't he targeted as well? Surely he would have backed Mason as well. In fact, in Declassified, Mason was doing missions with the CIA helping out the Muhajadeen in 1979, only a year after they went out to kill him. And finally, it's just never mentioned again. That was until Black Ops Cold War, where in Hudson's operator bio, there's a redacted paragraph under the year 1978. So, did this happen? Nobody really knows. And that's a wrap. We're done. Uh, I decided not to do the little scary tear at the end because who cares? But uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's we're done. This uh, come, I've come a long way since the first Call of Duty Iceberg. It's only been a year, but I mean, the channel's grown to like 26,000 subscribers now. It, it, it's crazy. I never thought, I mean, if you watch the original one, which don't, it's horrible. But in that, I directly say at the end that uh, I'm not going to release this publicly. Which is mind-boggling to me now. I can't imagine not doing that. <laughs> hey, um, thank you for watching. Thank you for watching all my videos. Uh, doesn't matter which one. It could be the Star Wars one, the Transform either Transformers one, Marvel, the MCU, Spider Man, Halo. Uh, it could be the Cowboy Bebop one or MonsterVerse, or whatever. Godzilla, Lego, etc. Like, doesn't matter. Like, thank you for uh, watching. I hope you all enjoyed. I enjoyed making this. Honestly, I did. Um, it definitely helped that I, <laughs> I, I thankfully kept most of the script from the original one. Like I archived the script from the original video. So I was able to reuse a lot of the script, thankfully. That's why, that's why this came out earlier than expected. I expect this to be released like late February, honestly, and it probably would have if I didn't save the script, but yeah, that's it. We're done with call of duty content. No, that's not true. Well, I'll, I have some ideas for future Call of Duty content, but not like gameplays or anything like that. That's not my thing. Um, maybe like a tier list or something. I don't know. Not, not, not nothing crazy, but uh, I'm not doing another Call of Duty uh, uh, Iceberg. We'll be doing a Battlefield one, though. So the, if you're interested in that one, stay tuned, I guess. But yeah, next we'll, we will be doing the second Batman Iceberg. I'm going to try to have that out 
roughly around when the Batman releases, but uh, we'll, we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. So yeah, take care. Have a great day. Stay safe and uh, be cool. Where? Cuba.